this whole time. I bet you didn't know that you had this tab open. You're like, oh my god, my tab. My tab's open. Shit. What's, what, where's the sound coming from? Okay, so, um, today, uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be writing a debugger, um, for Linux. So, um, raise your hand if you've ever used a debugger on Linux. Uh, just, uh, just put that little raised hand in chat. Okay. Okay, now, now raise your hand if you've ever used a debugger that works on Linux. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This <laughs> <laughs> If I'm using Wine on Linux to run Visual Studio, does that count? No, that doesn't count. How would that count? Why would that count? Uh, uh, what are you talking about? GDB for life. How short is your life going to be? 30 seconds? Are we inventing console.log today? <laughs> this is pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, Desu, thank you so much for the 33 months. Uh, forget the sad. Thank you so much for the happy new year, 25 months. And Julian C., thank you for the debug me daddy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm, so I'm laying down in bed, and my spidey senses go off. Gamozo's streaming. I can feel it. Are your phone notifications a spidey sense? Like, when you get a spam by, like, Uber Eats that's like, buy fucking food. Are you like, oh, I'm getting a spidey sense that I should buy food. Geekpire, you might be the easiest to advertise to person on the planet. You think everything your phone tells you is some gut internal feeling. Ugh. I received no phone notification. Well, you would have if you liked and subscribed. And hit smash that bell. Did you not smash the bell? The Geek Pirate's gut is actually a phone me thinks. Yeah, exactly. Geek Pirate already put Neuralink in his noggin? Yeah, yeah, you can tell from the... You know. I mute every notification. <laughs> Happy New Year? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 2023 is gonna be great. This time for sure. Upvote and bump. 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 No one has answered my homework problem that I posted in the form. Bump. It's been a month. This homework was due a month ago. Please, someone on the internet, do my homework for me. Bump. <laughs> Happy New Year, year of the Ghidra. Honestly? Yeah, Ghidra's been out for like... Three years now? That's enough time that it probably has finished analyzing a basic CTF challenge. <laughs> Serious great already, we got a Gamoso stream. <laughs> Hell yeah! Finally, EU friendly stream. Exactly. I am doing this for the Euros. I see what you did there. Kidra slow. <laughs> Kidra slow. Ah. Ah, this year is already better than 2022 if he keeps up this schedule. I mean, the bar, the bar ain't high. Segmentation fault. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime.
Happy New Year. Hell yeah. All right. All right, chat. Who is ready to write a debugger? Because I am not. Because if there's one thing I know about the Ptrace API is that it sucks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this stream off like up here. We're going to be confident. We're going to read the man page. We're going to assume that the APIs do what they say they do. And then as the stream goes on, you're going to see this steep decline where we realize more and more that we're adding completely random hacks to get Ptrace to do ev even the most basic operations. So that's kind of what we're expecting throughout the stream. All right? So a little bit of that. Perhaps if you had a good debugger, you could figure out what Ptrace is doing. You need more print apps. Krunk, thank you for gifting a sub to JB Weld Pot Pie plus a couple things times something. I don't know. A number. P Trace's poop. I wrote a toy zig debug. Why does everyone in my chat use zig? I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. You don't, it, it it's like the anti-boomer language. I don't, yeah, exactly, that's way better. Why does GDB not work well? I'm not sure if GDB sucks. <laughs> Look, we've gone on this tangent a couple times before. And while I recognize the insane amount of value to society GNU software has brought to the world, GNU software also has an aroma associated with it. A little bit of a, little bit of a cheese flavor, scent sort of thing. Swap GS, thank you for gifting us up the tired universe. Krunk, thank you so much for gifting us another sub. Holy shit. Holy shit, we're perfing today. We're about to beat our last record. Keep up the support. Why is it telling me that? I can't, I can't solve that problem. Uh, Wilbo, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. And <laughs> not the wine kind of aroma. Yeah, so basically the theory behind this stream is that hypothetically, if we... I am very good at writing exploits. And exploits leverage the undefined behavior of code to do things that you want it to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that same hacking exploitation knowledge to use a well-defined and documented API to maybe remotely do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Feel free to steal some of the logic from my Ptrace wrapper. I'm just imagining this code's going to be an absolute shit show. I hope it's a meme. It might be real. Um, I might say that this looks real. This looks reasonable. Mm. You got a weight pid. A weight pid with wall. Yeah, yeah. Weight pid's like half the problem. We may get a pid we don't know about yet. That's the problem. That is the problem that I would like to solve. I don't want to write my debugger like all other debuggers that you just randomly get new PIDs showing up that you literally don't know are supposed to exist. And I guess you just whack it in your database and you're like, it's probably fine. That's probably, oh, totally good. So what we're going to try to do is we're trying this string. Trying. Remember. Beep. We're going to try to make a Ptrace debugger that coherently maintains an expected state 
for all of its debuggies, such that the debugger knows ahead of time what events to expect, such that we don't just make a catch-all and throw everything in a bucket and just like, yeah, yeah, I got an event from the kernel, whatever. That is the goal, okay? So I wrote this debugger a month ago, and it gets 95% of the way there. But then I had this problem. I had this really, really big problem. I had, I had to use my code. And chat, raise your hand if you know what happens when you have to use code. What happens to that code? What happens to the code? Yeah, 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 yeah. Beep. Yeah, yeah, it goes in the shitter. Uh, cause you you gotta you gotta add you gotta add the features that you need for it to have, and then you know you like you had this idea, and you're like, I'm gonna make this engineering marvel that actually fucking works, and then you have to use it, and then you set this whole thing aside in the trash, and then you work on some features. And then nothing fucking works anymore, okay? All right. Um, yeah. Will it be better than Remedy, rem, remedy Bug? Rem, remedy Bugger? Uh, mm. uh, yeah, it'll be better than this because there won't be a GUI. Yeah, I don't believe in GUIs, okay? I, I just don't believe in GUIs. There's just... Who uses GUIs? Who's, who, who, writes, who writes APIs and, like, ways to use the debugger? Best debugger was soft ice. Peak GUI? Yeah, I agree. What about TUIs? Oh, fuck that. I don't like TUIs either. Ugh, gross. System D sucks? Agreed. I don't know what that's related to, but agreed. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no interest in making an interactive debugger because nothing I want to debug can be debugged interactively. It's just, it's, I don't know. I mean, that would be the dream, maybe. But here, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to leverage the open source community to do that with my code as the back end yourself. And now I'm scaling. I'm, I'm writing scalable solutions. I'm leveraging other people's things. I could get a fang job. <laughs> It's not that I'm not doing fuck all and I'm just putting all of the workload onto other people. I'm leveraging other people's creative skills. <laughs> Web scale distributed debugger. Seems like your pitch deck is polished. Line go up. All right. All right. So, uh... What we're going to do is we're going to start with drawing a diagram. And chat, what do we do when we draw diagrams here? We draw them for about five seconds, get bored, and then start writing code. Okay? So that's good. This is kind of like the... This is like the foreplay to writing code. Except it will last for like 10 seconds. So like, what we want to do is I want to make a debugger that allows for debugging multiple different processes in the same debugger, but as completely separate debugging instance size. In, inst, instance oro, instance i, inst, in, 
in, in something. I don't know. This is why I failed English. So what we want to do is we want to have uh, we want to have a debugger. And inside this debugger, we want the ability to have multiple debugger instance or out uh, in 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 cells. Yes, multiple in cells. <laughs> Plenty of those in chat. Am I right? Programmers don't get laid. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to have is like multiple, they don't have to be processes. We're going to design this API so there's not actually a concept of like processes. There's just going to be like a debugger group, but we're going to call it a process for now. So we want a process here and a process here, and then inside those processoros, there's going to be like some threads, right? And what we want is that we will have like two different instances of a debugger in the same process such that we can debug whole systems or multi-process things where we want to have completely independent instances such that like when we stop this thread, it doesn't stop this fucking thing, right? We don't want that because we want as much stuff to be running as possible because the goal of this debugger is to capture bugs and events that are like race conditions and things that kind of require the program to be running at full speed. There's definitely situations where having breakpoints can slow down a program to the point that the bugs no longer are there. And so I want this to work at that scale across processes. And that means if I have multiple processes in one debugger, then Theoretically, I can then share state in my process, have everything packaged into one nice little blob, but debug multiple things, have inst like have all these little events and things coming from each of the threads, stopping processes, stopping threads, but being able to keep everything pretty separate. Also, part of this design, I want to understand exactly what state I am expecting for each thread. So if like this thread calls fork and creates a, another thread and clones itself, I want to then have this like dotted box T where I am expecting that very shortly or potentially in the past because it's ptrace that this is going to check in and say, hi, I'm new. Okay. And when that happens, I want to be expecting that thread to show up. And then I can color in the box and be like, good. So I want to kind of have this state machine where I expect and anticipate certain types of events at given times. Because the more, the more idea you have about what is going on, the more rigid and strongly typed we can make this debugger such that we don't end up, like I talked about a little bit earlier, we don't end up just like taking events in and just like, eh, I don't know, I'm just expecting anything at any time and I'm just gonna generically behave on that. Um, also, something that I want to implement that I don't know if it's a thing, I'm not a, I'm not a power user of GDB or LDB, they both suck. Every time I use them, they just crash and don't fucking work. But what I would also like to do is similar to when I said I want to be able to have one process running while another process is stopped and being introspected, I also want the ability to hit a breakpoint in a thread and stop just that thread for introspection, but leave the other threads running. So basically, I want to have an API where there's basically a flag when you make a breakpoint and you say, I want to make a process breakpoint, which will stop the process and I also want to make a thread breakpoint where it's like I want to introspect that thread maybe I want to get the register state or I just want to record that it hit something but I don't want to then go through the process of stopping all the other threads then giving you the breakpoint notification then restarting all the threads because once again that affects the execution flow of the target program and that 
can make bugs show up differently than what you want. I want this to be as minimal overhead and minimal, like, I, I don't know. I, I want it to be as least invasive as it possibly can be. Um, I want this debugger. We're mainly going to start off developing it to handle uh, fork exec where we launch a process under the debugger. But this also needs to work with processes that have already started. And if you've ever done that with Ptrace, you'll know that that sucks ass. Um, so we'll do that last, but that's something I want to support. So basically, have a coherent idea of what all the threads are doing, have a way of grouping threads into different, into different groups such that we can, and not thread groups. When I say groups of threads, I don't mean the TGID. I mean that you can arbitrarily pool threads into your own groups such that you can start and stop groups of threads as kind of a collective unit uh, across processes and also in the same process. In most situations, we'll initially probably design it as literally just threads of a process and the group will just be the process. Um, but I want it to be super flexible to making groups. I want to make sure that you don't get events for events that are outside that group. I want to make sure that things that aren't stopped as part of a group don't affect other groups and they just keep running. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that we can do here. Driving, thank you so much for the tier one. Uh, Zom, you should be working. Uh, thank you so much for the one year of scammage. Egos, thank you so much for the seven months. Nikov, thank you so much for the... Uh, Gacho e Pepe, uh, three months support. Severini, thank you so much for the 18 months support and a lip vibration. Will it be a time travel debugger? No, I have no interest in time travel debuggers. That's not really my, I've written many, but I will usually write them as a way of fuzzing, not as a way of debugging. I'm not super convinced on time travel debuggers, to be honest. I have not, ever effectively used one to repro a bug. I don't know. What arts are you planning to support? Pretty much all of them. Um, I'll probably just have a stub that's like implement your architecture specific breakpoint stomping logic here um and that's it so basically it will be designed that you could just drop in like whatever this the int three break is for your architecture and just put it in one thing and it will just work um pretty much breakpoints are done the same way on all architecture obviously hardware breakpoints are going to be more specific but we're just not going to do hardware breakpoints Imagine writing such poor code that you need a debugger. Yeah, I'm using Geek Pirates code. I wake up early or stay up all, all night? I woke up early. I woke up early. Okay, so that is the theory here. Um, we don't really know if any of this is going to work. Although I had a major discovery a month ago when I wrote my debugger. And I've got a wait pid trick. And the wait pid trick is one of the dankest little tricks I've ever found. And I think we're going to be able to use it for hopefully making this super fast and low. The other thing is I want this to have a low CPU overhead. I don't want to have hot spins. I don't want to have, like, hot polling operations, um, which is hard because you have a very limited API. You don't have async APIs for doing ptrace. You can't, um, there's no way that you can select on a debuggy. To my knowledge, I've looked through like a billion APIs. There's a way to turn like a, uh, you can, I, there's like something that you can turn into like a select FD, like something, something, I forget what the fucking API is, but there's like a way that you can turn like a PID into a, a, an FD so that you can select on it. But I remember like, I would have used it if it would have worked. So there must have been some weird reason why I couldn't use it. I can't remember why. So we'll see. 
So that's basically the goal here. Um, I also would like to make it so that this debugger can be multi-threaded in that the debugger itself can have multiple threads. Like you could have a thread for each process, but I'm not sure if that's possible. Like, I'm not sure if you can... I think if you do ptrace attach, it is. So I think what we would have to do is if we wanted to debug a thread with a different, like, debugger thread, I think we would have to detach from it and then attach to it from the other thread, which is kind of racy, and I... I don't know. I guess we could maybe stop it and then detach. I don't know what happens when you stop a thing and then de detach it. I don't know if it automatically continues or it just like fucking zombies it. But that is possible. You can only have one process debugging. Yep, exactly. And, and that, to my knowledge in Linux... It, that is like the Linux definitions of processes of threads in that like, even though we could have multiple threads in our debugger, we can't get wait events unless we have attached our thread to that other thread, which kind of sucks. So that is something that I would like to support because then we could have multiple different kind of debuggers for different threads and we could potentially be hitting breakpoints and handling them in in their own threads and once again hopefully decrease the the effect that we have on the targeted program p thread detach starts the thread before detaching i mean theoretically we could like ebb fee the program although you don't know where you're putting the ebb fee so we wouldn't necessarily know if we're stopping other things there's a lot of hard problems here. So that is the theoretical plan today, okay? All right, how does that sound? Sounds like shit? Yeah, I agree. Sounds like it's not going to work. Um, I think without detaching, uh, I think without attaching, you can only wait pit on all children, but you cannot select subsets of it. Yes, that is my knowledge as well. How do you hear the music? Uh, through my speakers and ears. Yeah, get fucked. <laughs> I compiled a little bit of OS code over the holidays. I was rusty. <laughs> I've concluded GCC and CMake suck for custom binary app, but yeah, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. I mean, the GCC solution is like, use the linker scripts for everything. And linker scripts suck and they're fail open. Like, if you don't define a section or a symbol, it will just emit a binary with, like, with it not in that section, or it will just put it in a random fucking thing. That, like, I, I hate them. I, ref I refuse to, to write linker scripts. I refuse. Your mic doesn't pick up the music then? It does? Oh, there, you're getting con conflicts. Conflicts here. Um, if you don't need a multi-threaded tracer, you can just use my frameworks. Uh, it solves the unknown PID problem by just banking the event in a map. Uh, yeah, so I have a, I have a really dank solution to it that causes us to never handle events from processes we don't know in the first place. Also, unfortunately, I'm not going to use C. This is all going to be written in Rust. Ah, uh, uh, all right. So, uh, first we need a name of the project. What do we, what do we want to, what do we want to call the project? Uh, otherwise we're just going to have to look at a squishable. Squishables. Let's see what we got. PDB. Call it stinky. Debug console.gamozo. I hope none of you have any creative roles at your jobs. 
I I really I really hope big pee pee. GDB Q plus. <laughs> P big pee pee trace. Call it catfish. Oh my god, there's a gumball machine. I don't like that it's printed on, unfortunately. I do like the gumball machine, but I don't like that it's printed on. I like when they're like separate color. <laughs> Enterprise name gener generator. Oh, I like the Christmas tree. That's good. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, the Christmas tree is great. Oh my God. Oh, that's really good. Only one review. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> oh, they have mini little pumpkin and apple pie and cherry pie and cheesecake. Oh my God, does that cheesecake have a ch cherries on it? Oh my God. <gasps> <laughs> Bug miss. Oh my god, these are good. Oh my god, they're so good. Oh man. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> marshmallow. I still need to order a marshmallow. Sushi roll. Oh, they have a new cheeseburger? That's a new design, slightly different. <laughs> sour, no, it's sour. <laughs> it's sour. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh that's so fucking good are these not sorted they're sorted by newest but but they're not always unfortunately i like the squish loops <laughs> the chicken leg god the, the turnip oh my god i i honestly really like the peanut butter it's got the little bit of splooge coming out of it. <laughs> oh, it's got nutrition facts. <laughs> Smooth and snuggly. <laughs> That's so fucking good. Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly, kind of vibing with the massive pineapple. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Massive pineapple. Holy shit. Massive avocado. <laughs> pineapple V2. Ooh, I like the cherries. Look at the cherries. Oh my god. The little winky cherry. Oh my. <laughs> oh, they're so good. When are you going to make a VTuber model? I'm already my own VTuber model. Standard squishables. I never look at the other ones. Oh, I like the oyster. Oh my God, that oyster is cute. <laughs> That's really good. That's so good! Oh my god! Avocado debug. I already have an avocado. The succulent. The wizard. <laughs> I like the sourdough. <laughs> Is the massive avocado the reason millennials can't afford housing? Yeah, exactly. Pearl debug. Oh, look at the cauldron. <laughs> oh my God, they're so good. 
clam debug. I kind of I kind of like the clam. I, the, the peanut butter is good though. The peanut butter is really good though. <laughs> Corgi? There is a Corgi. Where the fuck was the Corgi? Scroll past. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah a little Corgi. <laughs> I also like the juice box. Why are some of these good? Like, I wouldn't think a juice box would be good, but it is. The banana. Look at the banana. It has little flaps, little wings. <laughs> Corgi's so fat. <laughs> oh god, what do we pick? What do we pick? Hmm. Sour bugger. <laughs> The ladybug? There was a ladybug? Was there a ladybug? Did I miss it? Oh, there is a, la a ladybug too. Is there a ladybug one? I'm guessing that's the, the replacement to ladybug one. Usually I think they only have one generation at a time. The mushroom? I think the mushroom's really good as well. The mushroom's really cute. <laughs> it, it's pretty cute. I like the mushroom. Oh my god. <laughs> the mushroom stack. The mushroom's pretty good. Doe bugger. Rebel Elder, thank you so much for the 23 months. Hell yeah. Strawberry. Hmm. This is tough. This is tough. This is the hardest part of any project. We got to come up with a name. We could also do a mystery squishable. The problem is if we do a mystery squishable, then, then we probably already have it. Oh, I like the blue whale. Doe bugger. Hmm. Oh, the monkey has a little banana! Oh my god, look at the highland cow. Oh my god. Uh, I kind of like the oyster. <laughs> I kind of like the oyster, it's so cute. Uh, a spider? That would make sense, logically. But... Oh my god, the, the fucking dipped ice cream pop. Like, how do you... Oh, it's, it's so good! <laughs> the world is my debugger. <laughs> Spooter bugger. <laughs> you can't just put ooze in everything, chat. Okay? You have to have things make fucking sense. All right? Not everything has to be geek pirate code quality here. Debooger. <sighs> Debooger. I heard that. Shouldn't you be sleeping, Geek Pirate? D Doger. <laughs> Chat, you can name things without puns, you know. That is that is an op. You don't have to put ooze and 
d d puns and everything, okay? <laughs> Windbag. <laughs> Uh, this is tough. Lemonade it is. I kind of like the lemonade. I feel like that's pretty good. I feel like the lemonade honestly just looks really good. Like. Oh my god, there's a, there's a face in the, lo the lemon. There's a face in the lemon. <laughs> it's lemonade. It's so fucking good. Oh, it's so good. We might have to do lemonade. We might have to. Oh my god, the lemonade is really good. Oh, that's so fucking good. Is that the designer? Pat H. What else has Pat H done? We don't have to turn lemonade into a pun. We can just call it a lemonade debugger. Fuck! The succulent. The coffee pot. The toast. The cannoli. He's done the cannoli. Oh, you did the peanut butter. There's a tooth? There's a tooth with a tooth fairy pocket! There's a tooth with a tooth! I have a tooth with 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 how do you come up with that shit? <laughs> How is that a thing? God damn it! <laughs> he also made the eggplant. <laughs> Have the normies left yet? <laughs> yeah. All right, chat, I think, can, can we source the lemonade? I think we can, I think it's in stock. Yeah, we can, we can get lemonade. I think we might do lemonade. <laughs> Eggplant it is. I think it's cheaper if you just marry the person owning the store. They're, they're so good. All the squishables are so fucking good, dude. <laughs> They're so good, dude. Oh, is that a shooting star? Ha oh, oh, ha oh. <laughs> ha. Little rainbow. Ah, that's a rainbow. Oh, it's New York City. Oh yeah, they're based on, oh fuck, I was just in New York City. I should have gone to the squishable. Headquarters, please. Fuck! Damn it! <laughs> they have physical stores, which are, which are good. They have like random, I think they do pop-up stores, but I'm sure they have a permanent store in New York. <laughs> They're so fucking good! Ah, uh, all right. We'll call it lemonade chat. All right. <laughs> I'll just update our rust. Lemon debug. Lemon debug. Do we want to call it lemon debug? IRL stream going to Squishable and buying every Squishable in display. What's i586 PC Windows? Uh, bootloader. 
Bootloader prior to SSE. I586 should use uh, X8, uh, X87 instructions, but I686 is probably going to use SSE. I think. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pulling that one out of my ass. Lemon debug. Lemon. Lemon DB. <sighs> Web scale incoming. <laughs> LDB, Bug Juicer. God, these are so bad, Chad. When you go to interviews and they like ask, like, do you have any good ideas in your heads? Do you like say these things? <laughs> and we're unemployed. <laughs> LDB is dangerously close to LLDB. Yes, out loud. <laughs> That's why we're watching you. Uh, am I using Rust? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have any good ideas in your head? Is an outstanding interview question. Yeah, feel free to use that one. Twitch is terrible at naming shit. Twitch is fantastic at everything. They're great. <laughs> All right. Do we want to call it lemonade or lemon debug? And press yay for lemonade, nay for lemon debug. Uh, it's d definitely a yay. Okay. Okay. It's just yay. All right. I like how people are saying yay with a Y. Like they've never watched C-SPAN at 2 in the morning. Do other countries have C-SPAN equivalents? Where you can just watch raw shit government footage? What's <laughs> <laughs> C stan. What the fuck is Z stan? Based C span enjoyer. All right. Lemon aid. All right, chat. Does anyone else have an idea of how we can delay writing code for longer? <laughs> three hour rant check twitter draw the logo chat like i don't know how to draw i can't draw okay you can ask chat what the best office chairs oh i like the i like the gamer x 43 rgb it's got it's got a lumbar pillow, and it's made out of pleather that will wear out after three masturbatory sessions. <laughs> Fucking gamer chairs are awful, dude. <laughs> I hate gamer chairs so much. <laughs> Happy New Year, hell yeah. <laughs> Never replied to my Twitter G DM? Yeah, get fucked, kid. I haven't really been using Twitter much this past half year. Use Arch Linux. Why would I ever want to use Arch Linux? Arch Linux is for people who literally don't know how to use, like, com it is like the entry level. Oh, it's so advanced because once a year I get a slightly nightly package and maybe I have to wait one day before updates work. 
Oh, I'm such a hardcore Linuxer. Woo! <laughs> That's what y'all sound like, okay? What? I'm. I already made it. But if they don't use Arch Linux, who can they blame their s the sing singless on? The si singleness? No, no, Linux gets you laid, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Pac-Man's kind of nice. Binary package managers are cringe, okay? How are you, how are you gonna make sure you don't get viruses if you're using pre-built packages, you're gonna get infected because with real open source, it can't have bugs because you can just read all the source before you use it. Answering Arch questions is a great icebreaker. I, I just like shitting on Arch because everyone views Arch as like the like God Linux distro. When in reality, it's just no different than any other Linux distro. It's got a package manager. You type package manager space program you want to install and then it installs the package. <laughs> I ran Arch Linux when I was like fucking 14, okay? Shit was easy, all right? Some basic shit. <laughs> Open source, no bugs. Exactly. I review all the source code of my Gentoo packages. Yes, exactly. Arch was good until, oh, they went system D. Chat, name one good thing about System D. Other than it's good for Intel and AMD stock. <laughs> System D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking up my DNS config. It's easy to create services and timers. Who you, who writes the service? The maintainers are insane. Oh god. Oh god. System D works great on whistle. Gah. Does not require fiddling with weird scripting for concurrency. Is that why it blocks if I don't have fucking DHCP configured correctly? Like if you boot, if you try to boot or shut down an Ubuntu machine that doesn't have an Ethernet cable plugged in and you got what a five minute timeout where it blocks before dropping you into a shell. Is that the fearless concurrency that it has? <laughs> System D K exec is awesome. K exec is a cool concept, but it is is kind of not supported by everything good enough. I think KExec would work if that's how it was designed, like, if everything was designed around it from start, but, yeah. It gives you time to reflect on your day when booting while you look at waiting for user session 1000. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad, dude. All right. Yeah, can we kill more time, chat? I don't want to write code. Writing code's so hard. Name, name all the code then, chat. Thoughts on chat GPT? Eh. 
Just like all other AI. Eh. Ooh, he's got a plushy redemption! We're gonna be an avocado today. Because it was on the top of the stack. Things are moving to a KXX style bootloader setup. System D is uh, funnily enough moving there. Monkas. Avocado is the cause of current high inflation. No, that's because of the, the problem is that lazy millennials don't work because they're lazy. Okay? That's the problem. They're so fucking lazy because they're millennials. All right. <laughs> All right, chat. Ask chat GPT to rewrite P trace three man page. Ah, so it's actually accurate. Chat GPT, read Linux kernel code and tell me where P trace diverges from the spec. Stop paying $5 for coffee and save it for a house deposit. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a... I think we're going to make a debugger. Uh-huh. Impl debugger. And this is a... A debugger of... A group of de de debuggies, Tracy's? Do we want to say Tracy's? I think Tracy's is the correct term here. Debugger of a group of Tracy's, and then we can say that um, uh, debuggers. Maintain the state of all uh, of the traces um, in their group. Um, it is possible to have multiple uh, debuggers um, in a single process, allowing uh, separated uh, uh, sets of traces to be debugged as. I don't know, that, that, yeah. Um, let's see, um, a debugger doesn't particularly, particularly um, manage a group of threads identical to, ident identical to a process group or a thread group. Instead, it's an arbitrary, arbitrary collection of thread, uh, of debuggies, no, traces, um, arbitrary co uh, collection of traces that the user, that, that, the user specifies. Could the editor font be bigger? Um, yeah, probably no. <laughs> it's already using up way, way too much space. The S needs to be out. <sighs> Sick. All right, then we'll have a debugger. Yeah, we'll have a um. Uh, we'll just say like uh, uh. This is like I don't. What should we call the debugger process? The 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 implementation of the your. Debugger process. I think your debugger process is good. I like that. I like that.
And then we're gonna have inside of that, we're gonna have a, a debugger. I want to be like you. Like you. Been to inside for two. Bam! Like that? Chat, raise your poggers. What's your thoughts of LDB and GDB? Uh, they suck, they never work, they pretty much always crash out of the box, they're incredibly slow, and they're fucking awful. <laughs> GDB crashes all the time, LDB is painfully slow to the point of being unusable. Whoop! That didn't work. Chris Nova, how's it going? Woo! What up? <laughs> hacky derm represent. Ha hatch hatchy hacky derm? Hatchy derm? I honestly have never vocalized it. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to know how to vocalize things that you've only ever read. <laughs> when I was uh when I was a kid, I always I used to think that integers were integers. And then I realized later that that's not what they're called. And it made me sound like an idiot. And then we just backtick this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same with char. I read it as char, not car. Really? Char. Interesting. Are you American or English? I'm curious. I, I feel like I wouldn't imagine seeing it that way. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Spanish native? That makes sense. You got the Che. Tanks. Oh, hey, tanks. I still read it like this? Really? It's Chars and Charizard? <laughs> Char is just charade for bits, fair enough. Chai. <laughs> Here for the debugging and haggadim rants and to rep my composal of. Oh, thank you so much. 
I recently learned that the P in JPEG stands for photography. So now it's JFEG. Oh my God. I like that. I really like that. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Needs more JFEG. <laughs> I can't believe the, the sword actually happened. Yeah, put your, we need to make a sword emote. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else we want to add to this diagram? Um, a uh, debugger will only consume events from its Correct, it's, yes, set of, uh, it's set of, uh, Tracy's, um, it also will not automatically manage new Tracy's, uh, it will not manage Uh, Tracy's on less they are known about ahead of time. For exa example, for example, if a if a uh, wait pid returns a pid that we are not aware of, the tool will throw an error rather than silently adding it to the pool of Tracy's. To make this all work requires that we have a coherent state machine of processes we expect to be showing up. This is a hard problem with Ptrace. But if we can solve it, hopefully the debugger will be significantly more reliable than uh, GDB and LDB, which are a bit more hand wavy. About unexpected states. How does that sound? Is the Tracy square in the uh, in the diagram the eBPF tool? Or are you just giving up on Ptrace? No, we're gonna do this with Ptrace. I think we're gonna we're gonna start off very confident and with good goals in mind and 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 a dream, and then we're gonna realize more and more that what we want to express is not going to be possible. <laughs> And we're gonna slowly give up and be sad. <laughs> Tracy's mom! God, that would have been a great name for the thing. Why? We could have called it that. We could have called it Tracy's mom. <laughs> that would have been great. I smell a light scent of copium right here. Yeah. yeah. You wanted squishable? I mean, we have to get a squishable, okay? All right, so um, the trick that we're gonna be using um, is to my note, so let's go, let's go on a little adventure. Everyone put on your little adventure hats, okay? Take your adventure hat and put it on. In this case, we're gonna use the avocado adventure hat. And the avocado adventure hat is telling us that we need to start looking at some man pages. Now, um, the man pages that we're gonna get comfortable with, I guess, is that fair? Should we say the man pages that we're gonna get uncomfortable with is the Ptrace man page, um, as well as the WaitPid man page. So the trick that I discovered, um, basically, Is this new? Are these nullable annotations new? 
When did those go in? 2022-1203? When did these go in? That's very new. I like that. Can we get a clap? For annotations? I like that. Okay, um, so one of the biggest issues that we have that we want to solve is particularly that we don't want events from other debuggies and tracies to just magically show up to ours. So the solution that I came up with that is like really interesting, and I think the only way to do it. Um, what version man page are you looking at? Are you on 6x? 6.02. Yeah, 6.02. I don't think I've ever checked the version number of my man pages. <laughs> um, so, the hard problem is that when you do a uh, weight PID, which is the traditional thing, like any debugger that you see is going to do a weight PID, it's going to use a PID of negative one, and it's probably going to specify the weight all option. And what that's going to do is, if you're not familiar, weight PID will block, so it will uh, optionally block. It will block on the kernel until the kernel has a signal from one of your children available. And this will describe it. Uh, all of these system calls are used to wait. Uh, let's do this. Um, uh, and let's reformat it. There you go. All of these system calls are used to wait for state changes in a child of the calling process and obtain information about the child whose state has changed. A state change is considered to be the child terminated, the child was stopped by a signal, or the child was resumed by a signal. In the case of a terminated child, performing a wait allows the system to release the resources associated with the child if a wait is not performed, then the terminated child remains in a zombie state. See notes below. And that's how you can get zombie processes and stuff. I mean, there's like a billion ways you can get zombie processes, but probably one of the more common ones. Um, if a child has already changed state, then these calls return immediately, meaning they don't block at all. Otherwise, they block until a child changes state or a signal handler interrupts the call, assuming that system calls are not automatically restarted using the SA restart flag of SIG action. In the remainder of this page, a child whose state has changed and which has not yet been waited upon by one of these system calls is termed waitable. So basically, this will give us a pump. It, it will give us an event for each child that has a signal or a termination or a continuation. So this is like the core of a debugger. So you have ptrace that you use to attach and introspect and stop and start processes. But that more, that ptrace API mainly allows you to affect the state of a child. The wait APIs are how you block until the child has done something. Because we don't want to sit in a hot loop. Uh, we, we have to know when like something happens in the child. For example, if the child crashes, we will see that when WaitPid will return with a SIGSEV result and be like, hey, the child crashed with a SIGSEV. Um, so, the problem with the Wait API and kind of the whole Ptrace ecosystem in general is everything uses, uses PIDs, not file descriptors. And in the case of Linux, and this is something I'm going to have to clear up, and this is why I say trace E and stuff. Um, in the world of Linux, everything is a PID, right? Threads don't exist on Linux. Um, there's kind of a concept in Linux on, uh, unfortunately, the, the kernel definition of a PID is different from the user land definition of a PID. So in the kernel and thus the way that like kernel syscalls and everything work is a PID is just a unique identifier for like your thread, right? Um, because when you make a thread, uh, in the, in Linux threads, like don't really exist. Like when you call create thread. It actually forks your process, but uses the old address space with copy on write. Um, so it's kind of tough because we're going to be using like PID and TID and a lot of things in here, and I'm going to try to make them more explicit. Um, 
Unfortunately, PID basically just means thread on Linux. And for almost all of these APIs, if I'm not mistaken, these APIs use PID from that kernel construct. So, one of the biggest problems with uh, wait, so wait, we're not gonna use wait at all. Wait PID is the common one that you would use. So in this situation, here's how wait PID works. You give it a PID, you give it a return value to get the status code, and then you give it some options, which are like flags that control the behavior of the syscall. So you can give it different flags for the PID. Less than negative one means that you wait for any child process whose process group ID that is more like a process ID in Linux is equal to the absolute value of PID. So if you do like negative 100, then that will wait on any child in the process group 100. Negative one will wait for any child process, which in our case would wait for any debuggy or tracy. Um, zero waits for any child process whose process group ID is equal to that of the calling process at the time of the wait PID. So that is waiting for children of your own process. So basically, this will, this will wait for threads of a specific process. This will wait for any thread of any process. This will wait for any thread of your process. And this will wait for a specific process identical to PID. So this will, listen, this will wait for a specific uh, like thread, effectively. Um, and then here are the three options that we have. We can give w no hang, return immediately if no child has exited. So that is just non-blocking. Basically, it will return and say, no status available for you now. And you would use that if you need to do non-blocking things. W untraced, also return if a child has stopped, but not traced via ptrace. We actually don't need this. This is how you detect if something is stopped if you're not ptracing it, but an arch in our case, all of our children will actually be under ptrace, so we don't need to specify this to get the behavior. Status for trace children which have stopped is provided even if this option is, um, uh, yeah, status for traced children under ptrace, which all of our children will be, uh, you'll get this anyways. And then W continued, which by default you don't get continue notifications, also return if a stop child has been resumed by the delivery of a sig cont. And I think I also want to track the continuation state. And thus, I will probably be passing these flags into everything. I think. Okay. Low level wizard, thank you so much for the getting, receiving a gifted sub. <laughs> Is he using Rust or an inferior programming language? I hope Rust, yeah. So, um, that is the goal. Uh, so the, the priority structure of this is coherency and state above all else, and then second to that, performance, right? So there are things that we might do. For example, we might wait on continuation signals such that we can maintain a coherent state of like whether or not a process has stopped or resumed. Um, rather than like most debuggers will only watch for stop events and, and kill events. And when they resume it, they'll just set that they resumed it. Um, I kind of want to set instead when we resume, when we continue a PID, I want to set a state saying, we expect that this will check in very soon saying that it has resumed and then we'll then register it its state as like resumed so instead of just going from stop to resumed we'll go from stopped to waiting for resume to resumed and yes that adds cost that slows things down that means that we are blocking a little bit more and we're going to have a little bit more in and out of the system um, but the goal of this is to be able to debug things extremely coherently. Like, we're probably going to intentionally fork bomb in here and, like, make multiple processes and fork bomb to, like, tens of thousands of threads and have them, like, stop and crash themselves and stuff 
and I want to never lose sync with the expected states. Like when we get a signal that comes in, we are expecting that those signals would make sense to receive at that point from an internal state machine, rather than just like, oh, I don't know, we got a signal. I guess we'll just say we got a signal. Um, and the reason for that is with anything that you do in programming, and in, in my specific case, uh, with really anything I do, the stricter you make it, the more aggressively it will fail when, it, when you're wrong and when you made an assumption that's wrong. And it just kind of allows you to fix things sooner and faster, and it amplifies bugs, right? If we had a bug in our state machine, it's very likely that this debugger would just never be usable. It would just catastrophically fail in all cases. If we made it a little wishy-washy, then maybe it will work for like, a couple threads or maybe it will work if threads are spawning with a decent gap between when they're getting spawned but then you get weird behavior or bugs when a lot of threads come online in one go and, and stuff like that so i kind of always try to design my stuff such that i amplify those failure cases because if they're amplified it's more likely that you will catch and observe them um so that is the goal so the, the trick that I have, and the, the, the crux of the problem here is that we want to have like these multiple debuggers with different sets of traces, and um, you're just going to have to oh, take my word for it, okay? Uh, we'll probably demonstrate it, maybe, if we design this in a way that we can demonstrate it, but there's a, ch a chance that we can't demonstrate this. But here's um, the Ptrace API has a way of setting um, options on a new debuggy. So when you got a new debuggy or tracy, tracy is the correct term. I'm going to keep saying debuggy. They both have two E's. Um, there's a way to set options and say like, give me a signal or an event when a clone happens or a fork happens, right? And these allow you to basically see when something has been spawned or a new thread has been created. But here is the problem. Um, let's say you have a single thread. You then exec in that thread, and, or let's just say, yeah, you have a single thread. You are ptracing that thread because let's say you started it under ptrace, whatever. You had ptrace trace me. You started under ptrace. It's only debugger. That thread then calls fork to create a thread or clone. I think everything uses clone now. Um, and now you have two different threads, and this ptrace event um so that happens and now you have two threads right because uh we're gonna say that we have the flag set where it's going to be automatically like under the debugger right um which i think is just default yes uh it'll stop automatically start tracing the newly clone process right and then this is the situation that can happen. And it, it, this isn't even like this theoretically can happen. This will happen all the time when threads spawn. You'll have your wait pid where you're waiting on all child children. You'll get a, an event saying uh, you got a sig stop from pid leet. And you have no idea what that pid is. And then you'll get a, I think these are stops as well. Uh, no, you get a, what do you get with these? A sig child. No. I forget, a sig trap, sorry. Then you get a sig trap. Um, let's, let's say PID1. On PID0, saying, yo, I just made a new thread. It's PID is 1. Okay? You can see the problem. <laughs> this, this is not some weird, obscure theoretical case. Like this, I hopefully will be able to demonstrate this because this will happen more often than not, I would say. So, the problem with this is, okay, well, how do we avoid this problem? So let's say problem. Um, and the, the, 
ideal solution would be like a weight V where we could give a group of known processes where we'd say like, wait for zero. And then you get the result from that. And then when you see that zero has made a thread, you then now will do a wait V one this, and then you'll get the sig stop here, right? To my knowledge, this does not exist. <laughs> um, so this, this is the dream, right? Then there is solution one. Solution one is that you can, for each known child, weights PID child non-blocking, right? So if you do this, this will work because it will just wait on that specific PID. But what happens in this case? Well, this is a hot loop. And that means it's uh, a CPU at 100% at all times. And this is what we would call bad, all right? So we don't wanna do that. So that is not an option. That solves our problem and it does work, right? So are there things that we can do with PID FD? And I think the answer was no. I remember, um, isn't it, uh, yeah. So PID FD, so the, the big problem is the way that you would solve this, the dream way, would be like, oh, okay, can we do like a select? Can we select on PIDs? And the answer is no. Select and ePoll, uh, which is just the faster version of select, but Linux specific. Um, these theoretically would be great, but they don't work on PIDs. So uh, work on PIDs, need uh, FDs. So there is a thing called PID FD, and I can't remember why I didn't use this. I can't remember if there are reasons it doesn't work. I can't remember if it was too recent for me, where it was just not something that I could use for my targets. I can't remember. But PID FD, if I'm not mistaken, is a theoretical solution, and I, I can't remember if I hard gave up on it because there was a reason or if there was i just didn't have time to do it right so uh so then there's solution two maybe and this would be pid fd plus e poll slash select and then there's solution Three, which is my magical solution. Now, my magical solution relies on wait ID. Um, just, re just retry it. It's, it, it's fun to, to see people spend hours on something and give up on it because of stupid technicality. That's kind of what I'm expecting. Um, so, wait. Wait, PID, we saw the flags here. We can W no hang, which is no non-blocking. W on trace and W continued are pointless. But wait ID is interesting. Wait ID gives you a little bit more control. We can do uh, PID FDs. Wait for the child in the PID FD in FD. Oh, Linux 5.4. Okay. Um, wait for any child in a process group. Wait for any child, ID is ignored. Um, wait for a pit who matches ID. So wait ID doesn't use like the weird negative crap that wait pit hacked in. And it like allows for a little bit more like enum based grouping of stuff, which is a little bit more correct. But is there any equivalent of KQ on Linux? Yeah, uh, ePoll. Um, so... Wait ID is weird in that it has different flags. It has W stopped and W continued. It has W no hang, which wait pit has. And it has whiff exit. So it has all the exact same flags. Effectively, it, it has a, a set. But it has one extra flag. W no wait. And W no wait leaves the child in a waitable state. 
a later wait call can be used again to retrieve the child status information. So the way that this you can interpret this is this is a peak. This allows you to do a blocking peak. Thus, what this allows us to do is we can take this solution, solution number one. Oh, KQ works for threads? Yeah, then I don't think there is one. So what we can do is we can take this solution and then out front, we can say wait ID uh, P all. And then here we can say uh, W no wait. And thus we can basically say block using 0% CPU until any child has a status, right? So this allows us to basically yield our CPU to the kernel and go to sleep and not be pegging the CPU. And then we then um, check all the children for the debugger of interest, right? So that works. That is what I implemented. And this is just a really weird quirk. I have tried the um, W no wait flag. It's not like a documentation limitation. W no wait is not a flag to wait pid. If you pass it to wait pid, you get a hard error saying this is not a supported flag, like E and Val, right? Um, so wait ID allows us to do this where basically what we have is we have this like blocking way that we can just go away for a majority of the time and then we individually can check in on every child non-blocking. Yes, this means that our thread could theoretically, like in this case, if we have two debuggers, this debugger will get a wait ID event for this Tracy, which means that we will like wake up and do a little bit of work when that happens, which sucks. Obviously, that's not ideal, but getting that event doesn't steal that event from this debugger, and thus this debugger won't end up consuming that event, right? So it allows us to implement completely arbitrary grouping of traces because we have a filter mechanism that allows us to yield for as much time as we can, and then we have a way of checking in with our specific threads, right? That's the theory. How does that sound? Um, I know that that works. I am like, that is what I implemented. It seems to be fully coherent, except I didn't have the level of state tracking I want to have in this. Um, yeah, you're going to wake up a couple times for, for this, but it's something you're going to have to just be aware of. And if you're aware of it, then it's kind of okay, right? That being said, if we can use... Pit FD, that's even better because then we could just make a group for those specific PIDs and then we can do a blocking wait and then we don't have to enumerate for each threat. Because with this model, we have to do one syscall for everything and then for every child, we have to do another syscall, which kind of sucks. Now, in reality, these children are probably going to be or in order of the order that the threads respond in and threads traditionally will use CPU higher based on the earlier threads. And thus, theoretically, once we get the first event, we can stop the loop so we don't have to enumerate all the children. We just have to enumerate the children until we get the first one that has an event. Then we can go back to the blocking loop. So like, hypothetically, we can save a little bit of syscalls there, but not much. It's still way more syscallage than I want to do, right? That's, that's my main issue. PIDFD and epoll select, I would like to do, I think the reason I might have killed that might have actually have just been that I think this requires super modern Linux. And that might have just been the only reason I killed it. Because I'm pretty sure that you can PIDFD on an FD and poll and epoll. 
and that is literally just better because we would just get to control the groups. So let's, um, someone was already discussing it. Um, if there's ever a good use of pit FDs, it's Ptrace. That's one ugly interface, uh, with all the signal magic and pseudo reparenting. Of course, porting it would take a lot of effort. Oh, interesting. Maybe hack pit FDs into Ptrace, uh, and other syscalls by passing pit FDs to PID. Pit FDs for Ptrace would be good, but I don't think they immediately solve the major issues with Ptrace. I'd really like the ability to hand off Ptrace control to other processes by passing them a pit FD, but that would require a lot more work. Something like, uh, yeah, which is something we've already talked about. Yeah, you can't really pass off these things to other processes. Uh, when pit FDs are used, they break the Ptrace parent relationship in the kernel. So any process with a PID FD for the Tracy can Ptrace it or get the Ptrace status events. I see. So you could like clone that because there's not one, one parent specifically. Current Ptrace code is designed around that relationship. Uh, yeah. I don't know necessarily if there are issues using PID FD. I do think PIDFD is super new. Can someone find when PIDFD went stable? I'm guessing five-ish territory. And I think that might not cover me. PIDFD, make PTrace and PIDFD work together. Okay, that's pretty recent. Are there broken issues? Like, is there... Are there reasons that you cannot use PIDFD? Like, is PIDFD fundamentally not possible for this right now? And I'm guessing that you would PIDFD to then see which thing you wait on, and then you would wait explicitly on it? Also, does this work for stops? Um... It's, like, really poorly documented, maybe? Does it give stops or just kills? Um. 5.4. Yeah. Oh, pit FD first appeared in 5.3. 5.3. So, that's not great. Because I think that there are things that I need to debug with this that are literally older than that. And thus, I wouldn't really want to design it around this, and I kind of don't want to have two operating modes because, obviously, that adds a lot of risk, right? Um, adding the pit FD abstraction to the kernel, okay. Wait ID got PID FD, allowing it to wait on PID FD directly. So this wasn't even designed for Ptrace, was it? Um, it'd be adequate to allow one Ptracer at a time. Huh. Pit FD API was 5.4, I see. Yeah. Yeah, the syscall went in in 5.3. So, and we would be using the syscall. We learned this with eBPF, which really went big in 5.14, and 80% of the industry laughed at us because it was irrelevant. Yeah, so many old kernels around. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. Um, I'm mainly writing this debugger for phones, and phones... 
I don't even know what um, Android is on. I think Android is on 5 for... Uh, I, I don't think it's specifically tied to anything. Um, Android version versus kernel version. There's not a specific tie, to my knowledge. I think they're on 5.14. Android 10 was 4.9. 11 was 4.14. Yeah. See, that's like... Android 11 is two years old, and that would already basically not be debuggable. Yeah, Android 12 has a 4.19 branch. So even Android 12 from one year ago, you couldn't use this debugger on, which honestly, to me, is probably going to be a feature killer. Now, I don't know how uncommon or how common it is to have 4.19. Most people are probably using the 5s. I think 5.10 is the most popular kernel right now. For Android, um, yeah, launch kernels versus feature kernel. Um, but unfortunately, I think that is why I passed on PitFD. I also am concerned because it's obvious PitFD actually wasn't designed for Ptrace. I think we still can make it work because I think what we would do is we would use PitFD to then block to see if we have a status. So we would use it as a filter mechanism. So maybe we still could use it as dual mode because it might not actually be that complex. Um, you can also obtain a file descriptor by opening proc PID. However, the latter technique is only possible if the proc file system is mounted. Furthermore, the file descriptor obtained in this way is not pullable. Oh, okay, so no. Um, and cannot be weighted with wait ID. Um, does this wait on stops as well? My S20 FE is on the 4.19. Yeah, most Samsungs are 12 on that. Yeah, yeah, see, you can see the problem. Like, that's probably not acceptable for my use case. Um... Hmm. I don't think we can use this. We could probably use this as a mode. This could po probably be like a special mode because I don't think this would replace anything other than this wait ID. Obviously, we wouldn't have to loop because we'd know exactly what we had to wait on, but we would then blocking wait on the group of PIDs we care about, and then we would get the actual status code by calling a wait PID for that specific child but only that child so we would really only this logic would change the whole state machine and everything i think would remain identical so honestly that wouldn't be too hard to have as an alternative mode yeah okay everyone has fucking four on their on their androids yeah yeah okay okay i i think i think we're gonna have to support f four then so We'll design it without PIDFD open, which makes me feel good because I don't know of anyone that uses this. This is like big brain my idea. Pixel Gang 510, fuck yeah. <laughs> this is my idea, and I like using my ideas because I, I, because I feel really smart.
then let's see. What is the what is the version requirement? Um what is the version requirement for what we want to do? That's when you'd move it to wait to pit FD. Yeah. Ultimately, let's be honest, the difference between these two, other than our like hostile, like super fork bomby environment, is it's gonna be negligible. Like it's it's really not gonna be a difference. Like, yeah, theoretically, we'll cut down on spurious like weights. And we'll cut down on spurious weight pids, but that's really not. That's I don't think that's gonna be a big a big deal. Weight pids old. How old is all all the flags I want? So we'll be using W continued. So two six ten. Fine with that. Uh, we'll be using weight ID, uh, which is two point six point nine, and we'll be using the no weight flag and it doesn't say a specific version for that so i'm assuming that that has been out since it came out so 269 2610 2610 uh and then p trace we're going to be using uh trace clone 252525252425252525 uh we won't be using that we won't be using that so yeah, I think the most recent thing we're gonna be using is gonna be 2610. So, um, which is ancient. How old is 2610? December 24th, 2004. So it'll work on routers. <laughs> it'll work on routers. Which, honestly, is actually a, a reasonable use case for me as well. Nice. Oh, that's when they added DVD read-write support! God, Linux is so bad until pretty recently, honestly. What, what, what sort of goodies did we get? H-bit support on Summit. It's when my la when the last version of my old Wi-Fi card supported. Uh, uh. Oh, KL Sims data size reduction. Is this when they implemented the compression algo? Wow. Wowie. Wowie. Ooh. Wowie. Wait, it was taking them 1.3 millis to look through 10,000 entries. <laughs> Holy shit, what did they use? A linked list? <laughs> ah! Woo. To be honest, I don't think it was until relatively recently that Linux got more beyond fucking linked lists. <laughs> like... For a long time, you pretty much just use linked lists for everything. Laughs and linked lists. <laughs> Wine release notes from 2004 should be neat. Ooh. The perf. Gamozo perf. Okay. So how does this sound, everyone? Let's, uh, what do we want to put on for music? Uh, we already did have an essence, which has been my kick recently. Um, K-pop? I'm not weebs here, okay? Uh, do I even want to go for my collection, or do I want to pull up some, some fresh, some fresh music? Hmm. We'll put on some, uh... Some some fever one oh five. All right. <laughs> Speaking of linked lists, I've read countless times that there are better structures than linked lists for most UK use cases, but most C code bases I've seen end up using some sort of variation of linked lists. 
Is that because of C's weak ability to have better containers or some other reasons? Uh, it's just easy to implement. That's it. It's like the only... Link lists are like the only data structure that you can implement in C without having to write either A, a significant chunk of code, or B, pull in a library. So link lists, basically link lists, you can make one-off handwritten implementations for link lists, and it's totally fine. Like you don't, you don't need a library for link lists. You don't even need like, like Linux kernel, for example, or really any kernel is going to have like, um, macros for like link lists, like front, back, doubly linked lists, setting the fields that are the flink and blank, stuff like that. And like auto containers, you don't even have to do that. Like link lists are such trivial data structures that you just don't even have to do that. Anything else, like the second you have a hash table, you already have like probably 40 to 100 lines of code for like a basic shitty hash table and for a linked list you literally can do it in like three lines of code like you don't even have to even if you have 10 different linked lists in your code base you can just re-implement the entire linked list for each one you don't even have to like share linked list traversal code there's just no reason it's that simple that's why what about linked list and rust no one uses it because it because link lists are fucking terrible stupid twitch not giving a notification yeah you probably didn't ring that bell <laughs> when will linus be like uh hmm, rust is pretty cool for drivers let's use it everywhere i would be surprised because i feel like a lot of the people who came out anti-rust like five years ago now are sunk cost because people are too afraid to make changes and too afraid to say, I was right five years ago due to the circumstances, but now the situation has changed. So now what you're going to see for like the next couple years as Rust gets like really common integration and is seen to work totally fucking fine along with C and other weird like kernel structures where people are like, oh, I'm so scared to use something other than C you'll probably very quickly see that a lot of people are going to get defensive and come up with arbitrary straw men because they're not actually trying to defend against using Rust now. They're trying to defend against why they didn't see it sooner. And that's how everyone works. Like, I'm guilty of that. We're all guilty of doing that shit. There's probably a term for like that specific thing where like you, you just fucking, I think sunk cost is close, but I don't, that's not exactly what I want to hit on. But unfortunately, that's just uh, the reality. And a lot of people tried to die on that hill and are going to continue maintaining that they were right because they want to say that they were right rather than just understand that no one gives a fuck about what they said a couple years ago. Like, I didn't know how my laptop was on fire and noticed the stream's 4K, yeah. I think the issue is that everyone working in the kernel would need to learn Rust to accept contributions. Yeah, that's kind of true. I mean, that, that's the biggest issue with any new language is literally the human capital issues. Um, um. Uh, one second.
<laughs> you just in an intermission screen? Hell yeah. What is the thing on the head static? That's that's just what it is. It's from a game. Linux needs a Visual Studio like debugger, something that's easy and intuitive to use. Uh, I don't know. I, I've never really liked the Visual Studio debuggers and friends, to be honest. Maple Story Horny Mushroom, hell yeah. And all these GDB front ends work well. Yeah, I mean, the GDB front ends are pretty bad. I will give you that. I will give you that. GDB 2E is amazing if you want to get depressed. Yeah, I don't like it. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. Everyone get your clappers together and here we go. Ah, oh, shit, we got to write that code. I like the documentation so much more than the code. Okay, Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, Tracy. And the Tracy is going to be, I think, a B tree map. Uh, what are PIDs? PIDs are uh, U32s? I32s? What are PIDs? Let's strongly type it. Um, a Linux PID, we use the kernel, um, description, thus, uh, each thread is a PID. Yeah? You like that? And then we're gonna have, like, a, I don't know, some, some state. Um, and what do we need for this? Uh, derive, clone, copy, debug, partial, ord, ord, partial, eq, and eq. And this is, uh, states of the, uh, uh, Tracy's under the debugger. Is this GTA radio? Yeah, it is. Clone and copy, Monkas. PID T is I32. Hell yeah, okay. Theoretically, that's probably the most correct thing for us to use. Mm 
Because that will then mirror, um, that will mirror, uh, use a deprecated alias. Oh, use libc. Oh, okay. I mean, I think we're going to pull in libc here. Oh, wait, isn't there a way now car where you can add a dep with cargo? Cargo, add, how does this work? Oh my god, you can do dash dash path and stuff? Okay, what if I say cargo add libc? What will that do? Will it give it a star? Oh my god, it tells you the features? Okay, we'll just use the latest. That's good. I like that more than star. I'll use the latest stable version. I like that. Uh, and then tells you the features. Standard. Context turn. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. That's good. That's the correct way. Now we're saying libcpidt. Nice. Okay. So now we have a hard typed pidt. I don't. I don't like type aliases in Rust. I'm sorry. They they just have the same behaviors as like type defs and stuff, and they're just too loosey goosey. They're not strongly typed. I don't like non strongly typed things. I like my type strong. You know. Didn't know it showed the features, yeah. Um, okay, so we got those, and yeah, this is good. Uh, so I'm gonna watch it down here. Oops, uh, and then we'll build and run it above. Okay, so, uh, what we need to do is impl debugger, and we'll do, uh, we'll start off with pub fn, just void star everything, ban! Ban, 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 ban. Ban. Um, this is gonna be like, uh, launch, launch, La launch, spawn, 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 launch, spawn, Sp spawn, um, create a new debugger with, uh, Debugging a newly launched process. Are you on something? Too much coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm not a not a coffee type beat. Uh, we, we want to do like uh, hmm. I guess we want to do like a the pro the program, which is a impl asref stir. And then we'll want to do... a... array... of args? And how do you do this? You can't nest impuls, can you? You can't do like this, can you? You can't do that, that's not legal. I wish that were legal, but I don't think it's uh, legal. Sorry, this is what I actually want. But, but I don't think this is legal. Yeah, can't do that. I guess, can you do this? Can you do this? You can do that! Kinda dank! Look at that! I don't think I've ever done that. That's pretty cool! That's really cool! That's just correct.
Why not Azrath? Because then you could pass in like a vector here. Will you finish this project or abandon it once the interesting bits are done? I'll probably abandon it when the interesting parts are done. All right. So, um, <laughs> right on. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, first fork the child that we will use to spawn the thread. Uh, launch the program. Okay, uh, let's child is equal to unsafe libc fork. So we're just gonna do a straight fork here. Then we're gonna say if child is zero, else, and this is parents, this is the child. Fork plus exec v e ew 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 you're ew. Also, will this debugger work on FreeBSD? No. No. We could get it to work on it pretty easy. It's got all kind of the same things, but no, not out of the box. V fork? There's no reason to V fork here, is there? No, we don't want to V fork. That's the opposite of what we want to do. <laughs> It just wouldn't even work. Okay. Um, we need to become a Tracy of the parents. To do this, we have to request to be Trace. And to do this, we do a unsafe uh, libc ptrace. And then we have to do a, a p trace, trace me, and then I think uh, nothing. Let's see, I'm pretty sure no other args are used. Um, PID, adder, and data are ignored, so literally just zeros. All right. So let's, uh, let's make a, um, a p trace API. Um, uh, safe wrappers around, uh, P trace. And then we'll do a uh, pub FN P trace, uh, pub crate for now. Uh, P trace. And then I think we'll pull these up in there. I'm gonna make these nice and strongly typed. Uh, mod ptrace. Use ptrace pid. This will uh, pub create this as well. Beautiful. Okay, pid. All right. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna do a uh. P trace. P trace trace me. Trace me? That cam camel camely cased? Camely cased? Um I guess that doesn't take a pid, so we won't take in a pid arg here. Um command. Uh and then we'll say P trace, uh, pub crates enum P trace, and these are uh, P trace operations. 
not a complete set implemented as needed, right? Uh, and then we'll do uh, trace me. This is a uh, request to be traced by the parents. Or this is become, I think it's just um, indicates that we are to be traced by the uh, parents, by it, our parents. Right? Um, uh, safe wrapper around ptrace. And then we'll do uh, unsafe. Is it going to return results? Uh, standard IO results. And then we're going to do a libc ptrace. Um, and then we'll do command. How do I want to do this? How do we want to do this? Uh, libcp trace command. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Do I want to just pass in the args? I guess it's uh, pid then com or command then pid. Request, I guess, is what they call it. Uh, request, and then we'll give it a pid. And then adder and data. I think this is how I want to do it. And then I think, can we use one return code for all? Uh, peak will return the value. That will return some BPF shit. That will return the number of bytes available. We're not going to use any of those. All other are negative one. Okay. If res is equal to negative one, uh, if it's not equal to negative one, then okay. Otherwise, error, uh, standard IO error, uh, last OS error. Um, check the results from Chase. Bam. Okay, and then we'll uh, let pid adder data is equal to, hmm, shit, this is kind of hard, man. I don't know if there's a good way to do this. Have I seen this? What is this? Command new. Is that safe? I don't like how you do your curly braces. That looks like shit for the match. Um, is it is it safe to use command? I just assumed it wouldn't be, but if it is, then we should just use command. Oh, it's command, I see. Command EXT. Performs all of that and then calls exec VP. It will not return, otherwise it will return an error. I didn't know this was an option. Well, then this is just more correct. Uh, so we should just take the... I guess then what I want to take in is then a command. Cool. Uh, pin... What, you pinning shit? What's this? Mod abuse. Mod abuse. 
Mod abuse. Can I do this? Or do I just have to do the P traces for all of these? I think we're just going to do a match. And then P trace inside. Which kind of feels like shit, but whatever. Uh... We can at least reuse the results, I guess, but... Uh, Libsy... P-Trace, trace me. Zero, zero, zero. Trace. Oops. Bam. 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 Okay, so this will then just take a command. Um, free exec. Sets a closure to be run just before it's invoked. Oh! Why don't we use this? That is what I'm using. Hmm, I don't like it anymore. I don't like this idea anymore. I think it's a dumb idea now. Yeah, I think it's a dumb idea. Command dot pre exec. Uh, unsafe this. Uh, set the um process. Uh, uh, set the process to set. Yep. The traced process. Um, requests, uh, set a, set a closure so the new process requests to be traced. Jesus. Um, P trace, P trace, trace me. Uh, and we can return a result whose OS error code will be communicated back to the parent and return as an error from, ooh, okay. And so we can just do that. <laughs> that just works then. Well, I'll be damned. I'm so glad that I had that idea all myself. I'm so glad that I did that all myself. And then we can just spawn it. Uh, 
Um, spawn. Bam. Okay, so now what we should be able to do is uh, let command is command new ls args. I don't know what's what's a what's a good command to run actually. Uh, hmm. Hmm. What's a good command? Uh, we'll just do arg, single arg. And then we'll do uh, debugger spawn command. And spawn can return an error. Okay, and then we'll do type result t is standard result result t error uh, wrapper around error and then uh, enum error um, errors for the debugger and then we'll do derive debug and then spawn and then standard io error and failed to spawn process and then we'll go down here and then we'll do spawn map error error spawn and we'll do okay Arg gives mute command. Really? Ah, oh. really? It doesn't use a builder syntax. I didn't know that. I mean, whatever. I actually don't mind. It, like, I don't have to pass it by ownership. Oh, well, that's kind of fun. Yeah, wait, that's ass. Why do they do that? Whatever. Okay, I guess they don't use builder syntax. I think it's dumb. Okay. All right, so uh, this should uh, run that. Dicks. No, that did work. That did work. Um, spawn that. Nice. So that means that the caller can handle uh, consuming, like, standard out and stuff and piping and stuff. That's kind of cool. I like that. Check out the lemonade. Oh, that's that's good. That's good. What the fuck? I didn't know we had artists. I didn't know we had smart people. Set a closure so that the new process request to be traced. Um, pre exec uh, runs inside the uh, forked child right before exec. Right? Forked right before exec. There we go. And then we spawn the child and then map that error and that should handle errors and stuff. So if this failed, if this failed, uh, let's just give this uh, uh, 
Let's just do this. Um... Error? What happens here? I don't think this will fail. Oh, error. Spawn. Oh, cool. So this will say that we failed to spawn it. Awesome. Awesome. That is nice. I like that. I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10 right there. That's a 10 out of 10. That's clean. That is clean. Debug spawn? Not a debug spawn. What? What? There's no... Oh, make a, a trait we control? A command X to X? Mm, I don't know. I don't like that. I'm not a fan. I think that's dumb. Uh, this will return a self. Um, spawn the child. Then we are, uh, register the child in the database. Uh, Tracy's dot... I don't like extensions like that. I, I like that here you say like explicitly debug or spawn. Theoretically, yeah, I could chain them if I if I did the arg thing. Um, but I, I like this more. I, I like this is more explicit in my I don't I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily like that. I do recognize that it's cleaner to type, but I don't know if I like that. Maybe I do. I don't know. Uh, and then I should be able to get PID here. Uh, it's going to be child. And then child X. And PID FD. Oh, look at that. There's PID FD for it. Dot ID. Okay. Uh, get the child's PID. And then child is equal to... We don't have to keep child around, right? Yeah, we don't have to keep child around. We're not going to wait on it. So we just don't care. Um, we'll just uh, shadow it here. We'll just do uh, child.id. And then we'll do pid. And that's going to fail. Um, and that's a private field. Can I, can I, can you do this? Can you limit, uh, yeah, okay. Um. Get the child's PID. Um, yep, and we won't keep the thing around because we're going to manage it ourselves based on PIDs and stuff. Um, and then, uh, Tracy's dot insert child and Tracy states, um, waiting, uh, what are we doing here? We're, uh, wait, uh, for initial stop. Um, we spawned a new, uh, we spawned a new, uh, program and we're waiting for the debugger to check in with an initial, uh, stop. We spawned a new program and we're waiting, uh, before, before it invokes exec. Right? Because we're going to call, uh, we're going to call, uh, signal or kill, right? We're going to kill our uh, raise sig stop. 
So this is a request to be debugged. And then we're going to um, notify the parents that we have stopped or stop fully before we exec. Uh, giving the parents an opportun opportunity uh, to introspect. Right? And we'll do a libc uh, raise libc sig stop. And then raise can't fail, can it? It can. Uh, Non-zero for failure. Okay, so if this, if this is not equal to zero, then that is the fail. If it's zero, it's success. Else, um, otherwise, we're going to, um, uh, error, uh, standard IO error, last OS error. Right? Are we not doing everything correctly so far? Uh, I like Tracy. Yeah, eh, Tracy's, Tracy's, Tracy's. Pid from raw child ID. What? I I'm fine with just doing the pub this. I don't know. I, I see I see no reason to make a, a, a setter for that. I don't think pids need to leak beyond the crate yet. And if they do, then we'll we'll figure that out. Um, okay, so run. And sweet, yeah, it never returns. Fan-fucking-tastic. Fantastic. Uh, so I guess Rust? How does that work? It uses exec uh, VP. Um... Yeah, so that will actually call exec the E. How does it... How does the program not exit? Use Nix? I'm not going to use Nix. Libc is like the only crate that I'm comfortable using for something like this. I don't want to use third-party code. Libc to me, I don't consider third-party enough. Um, why, how does that not exit? Can we not use command? What? How does that not return? Is it drop on command? No. Um, because we consume it on spawn. No, you don't consume it on spawn. But there's no drop implementation. How does one learn assembly? Start writing it, start reading it. Just get in there. Is there... Wait, how did... How does this work?
I see. Um, we never get past spawn, do we? Oh, shit. We don't get past spawn. I don't know if we can use this pre-exec thing, actually. Which kind of sucks. I want to be able to use spawn. Check other program. It, it would be any program. Yeah, I don't think we can use spawn. Spawn doesn't spawn doesn't work. Um oh, fuck. Which makes sense. Um We might just have to fork and exec ourselves. Which kind of feels bad. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Are we just gonna have to do this right? And, and do uh, I wanted to do commands so fucking bad, man. I guess we're gonna fork. Thanks a, thanks a lot for the shit idea to use command. Um, uh, process, impl as ref stir, uh, args, impl as ref ref t. <sighs> t, uh, as ref. <sighs> Libsy fork. I kind of like this more anyway, so you have more control. But uh, uh, creates a thread uh, to uh, exec in if head is equal to zero uh child then we're gonna do request to be debugged uh expect uh, failed to um failed to request to be traced one line let's go and then we'll raise and then here we'll do um uh raise and then how do i want to unwrap this what do i have for uh uh error last us error I can just panic it, but I think I'm just gonna unwrap this. It's kind of weird, but um, uh, failed to raise sig stop uh, at process starts. Okay. Panic. 
All right. Bam. Okay, and then we'll do echo. And then we'll do a hello world. I'm not going to spawn. And then we're going to exec in there. And then PID is just going to be the PID. Uh, uh, wrap up the child's PID. Okay, 82. Ah, there's no good way to do that, is there? Lame. Uh, failed to raise sig stop at process starts. And then error. Right? And here we're gonna say if that's equal to zero, and then we'll say panic. Failed to raise sig stop at process start. Bam. Failed to request to be traced. Okay. Beautiful. All right, now, uh, that's an unsafe. Pit is zero, and bip, 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 There we go. Now we can return out, which is fantastic. And, oh, so much better. Okay. So now we need to um, construct arguments for uh, exec. And we could call exec VP. Yeah, I mean, if that's in libc. Is that in libc? Yes, perfect. Okay, um, convert the program name into a C string. Uh, let's, uh, proc is equal to proc dot as ref dot, and then we need to do C string or I guess, uh, C stir. I don't think there's a way to, yeah, go from that to that. We would have to make a new C string new, and that takes a T where that is into vecu eight. So I think we can do that directly here. Can we do this? Do we have to as ref that? I don't think so. Beautiful, maybe. Ah, son of a bitch. Uh, as ref. Damn. So I think what we'll actually do is we'll just give it the same constraint then. Uh, into vecu8. Which kind of feels bad, man, but, uh, but that is technically more correct. Because then we're just inheriting that exactly. And then this is also the same thing, where this is also into vec u8. Right? Eh? Raise your poggers? Um... Bam. Bam. So as ref as a slice, and then that those can be converted into vecu eights, which string should be that and all, all that good stuff. So convert the program name into a C string, and that's good. Done. Then we need to uh, convert arguments into C strings. Let me at args is vec new. Arg uh for arg in args dot as ref uh args dot push mm, can't shadow um c args uh c args dot push uh c string new arg and those are all gonna be results as well. Uh, can I deref there? Is that safe? Mm, no. Not. Dicks.
Um. How do I want to do that? How do I want to do that? We could do the wear claws. Um, is that the most correct way to do it? I think so. Wear vacu eight from ref. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Dot into? I guess I could just convert it into the vec. Um. I guess we do a uh, vec from this. Right? Wait, no, we can't do that. Yeah, because it's a ref. Uh, okay. Um, okay, yeah, we'll just do this. Uh, do this. This is correct. Beep, beep, beep. We'll do the wear clause. Um, and then this will do wear. I like this, I think. Wear ref t implements uh, into vec u8. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Uh, T lives for A. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> um, the font? Yeah, I don't know. Miss? God, this sounds about right. What's the quickest way to double your money? Hold it in front of a mirror. <sighs> yeah. Jesus. Can I not express this nicely? What did it tell me to do? Isn't that what I did? I think I did what it told me to do. Where vec you ate from ref T. You can... Is that sane? Is that sane? I don't think so. I don't think this is gonna work. I think it was the same problem as before. Yeah, yeah, it's literally what we implemented. Um... Is there no good way to do this? Hmm. As bites? Uh, er, um. I mean, that's not gonna work because it's, uh, dot into. But that is then, it doesn't have that, because it's ref. Oh yeah, uh, into vec. Um, yeah, because it doesn't implement that, because we don't have a T here. Transmute. <laughs> Hmm. I'm trying to think of like what would be the best way to do this. 
there's a million ways to do this. It's not a hard, not a hard problem to express it. It's a hard problem to express it without like uh, limiting functionality here and expressibility. Um. Hmm. E. Impulse. Alright, it's already Azra, but you call Azraf again. We theoretically could, so we could like. I was wondering that, like, can we do a where this is in uh Azraf into evacuate? I don't think you can do that. I think that's illegal. Yeah, because that would be dine. And we can't do this because we don't have a T. And we can't do ref T. Uh, where ref T implements into evacuates because that doesn't exist. Uh, a ref T. Dx. 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 And there's no way to do that because it doesn't implement uh, copy. Because we, we need it to be uh, ref that. Yeah, because this is a, a calling issue. Because now we've moved the problem onto the caller. Take away the as ref on args as ref in the for loop. Hmm. I mean, that wouldn't solve it. Um. I feel like this has to be expressible, right? I could probably do like a cow type beat. Um. Um, Tuvec isn't a trait, is it? Yeah, Tuvec, no, that's on slice. The X. Uh, uh. What what do we got here? What kind of fucked up solution is this? That's Azref stir, which I know I could do Azref stir, but I don't want to do Azref stir. <laughs> Azref stir would be easy. I agree with that. That's easy. Um, I think this isn't possible with into. I think that's the problem. Into, into. Yeah, like this theor this theoretically works, but then this is an arg issue because from refref stir is not implemented for evacuate. Which is ass. And I don't think we can do an or here.
That's like actually a hard problem. What terminal? Yeah, X term. Fuck. Can you not do this? Rustations and shambles. It's like actually a hard problem. Azref U8? Yeah, because, um. Does that reduce anything here? Because, yes, you can Tuvik on that. Does that lose any functionality? I don't think so, because... Is there anything that... Can you make something that is into Vec U8, but is not as Ref U8? Ooh, I th think so, right? I think this reduces. The, I lose expressibility here. So that's not a solution. That's not a solution. Does it need to be so generic? Yes, because th this is how you learn. Yeah, see, that's dumb. Yeah, that, that's th as dumb as making it as ref stir. Is this not possible to express? without reduction and without making a new trait obviously if we made a new trait it would be fine what about borrow or like one of the cowie traits Um, or two owned. We could do two owned vec U8. Um, is this? Simple to owned to owned on that is a vac, yup. On T. So this would take any slice T, but would this take Does this get us the into U8, because if it implements U8, then this? Two owned for T, or T is cloned, just T, yep. Yeah. Stir, two owned is to a string. Oh yeah, and then uh, string, I don't think this would actually work. <laughs> I don't think two owned would work here because string would end up going into a string. <laughs> what can we do? Why are we trying to solve this problem? <laughs> I like it though. I like it. I like, I hate it, I like it though. Okay? <sighs> um. Hmm. 
Because I don't think, like, a Seaster, does that implement Azref Slice of Bites? Probably not, right? Um... It has two bites... But that's conversion. Currently a constant time. It's planned to alter the definition to perform length calculation. Interesting. Um, <laughs> what do we do? Is, is there not a way to do this? Into vacuum eight. Hmm. <laughs> Is there no way to do this? It feels bad. Absolutely stumped. Yeah. I am stumped. I'm really stumped here. I don't think this is expressible. Which I think is fair. Um, hmm. Yeah, like Seaster is a good, a good example of like a weird edge case. That would be cool if we could support it. But we can't, because this doesn't implement... We can borrow that, we can add with that. What IDE is that? It's, it's Vim. It's Vim. Yeah, so there's no way to borrow a Seaster. Interesting. And that also just doesn't implement... Uh, I see. Okay. I think I like the Desu solution the most out of all of them. I don't think there's any way to... to do this. Like, much better than... Uh, what is it? Azref U8. And hopefully this isn't inefficient. Uh, and then this will be two back. Uh, Azra. That two back. Right. I think this is the best we can do. Keeps it super generic. I would say that Azure View 8 forces you to be efficient, as you probably won't allocate for it. I mean, this is going to allocate here unconditionally, but we have to. Um... And then, um, do we want to leak these? Can, can you leak a C-Ster? I mean, you can forget it. There's no, uh, there's C-String. There's probably, like, into raw. Into raw. Yeah, it consumes. Perfect. So I think we have to leak here. And then C args dot push center pointer null mutes. Right, so now we should be able to do libc exec uh, vp, and then we should be able to do, uh, let's just leak this as well. Um, proc, and then c args. 
Do we have to leak that? I don't think so. Maybe forcing copy is okay? Uh, I was wondering about that, but that doesn't let you pass in a string with cap S, right? Do we have to leak this arguments array? I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think we have to leak anything, do we? I mean, we're going to anyways, like this will be leaked. Let's just leak it so it's more explicit. Rock the Casper. Um, into raw parts. Into raw parts isn't fucking out yet. Leak. So I guess what do you do? Leak dot. Uh. Uh, differs in me to, uh, as me pointer, yeah. Uh, oh, sure. Okay, null. Into raw as const? Sure. 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 Okay, so that should be spawning it. Um, 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 and expect, uh, failed to convert, um, we should do this outside? Let's do it first. Rock the Casper. To me, feel like it. Something like that. Into iterator. I was thinking about into iterator. But I don't think that would work for this case. <laughs> Alien dance, yeah. Lock the task bar. Sick. If you like it, rock the Casper. We have to do that panic there. We have to do this panic here. There's no options, but we can do these panics outside. Um, map, error, error, invalid, um, program. Uh, I don't, I don't know. What, what do we want to call this error? Uh, pro program to see stir, pro pro program, see stir program? I, I, I don't know. Invalid program? Convert program? Convert program? Convert arg. We're just trying to make the API nice, okay? Uh, failed to convert program um, name to a C string. But it is. Null error? That's it? It's just a null error? Uh, convert arguments. Arg. How do you become such a heavyweight coder? Uh, writing a lot of code. <laughs> Bam. 
so we got C string there, C strings there, bam, then we fork. So this allows us to cleanly air out before we do fork and stuff. I want to I want to fork and basically guarantee success uh, after fork. Okay. Now, um, I don't think we can use C string. Is C string pointer representation? And I think we're going to have to make another array. Because this isn't transparent, is it? Technically, it's box. Uh, box slice, which is not transparent. That's a fat pointer. Okay. So you have to make another... Um, uh, so we just, I guess, as pointer, as seaster which doesn't fail, and then as pointer on that. There's no, we can't as pointer directly. We can do into raw. We could do into raw. Oh, um, DREF target. Yeah, as pointer directly. Okay, good. Um... So, uh, we need to think about safety. Um, so, uh, child. And then we have to convert arguments into array. So, proc uh, as pointer for proc. That's totally fine. Um, lifetimes are fine on that. And then this will be let mute raw args is equal to C args dot into iter x dot uh into raw doesn't matter if we leak these dot collect right it doesn't matter that we leak these because they're gonna get leaked anyways when we go to exec. Um, and then this is into raw as const. Uh, 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 whoop. Hello? Oh, raw args. Uh, as pointer on that. Bam! And then, uh, and then raw args dot push, uh, standard pointer null. Uh, null terminates the arguments array, which is mandatory. Um, into raw, ba 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 ba. Hello? How? Into editor, into raw. What? How? What? But how? What am I doing, dumb? What am I doing, dumb? What? Into iter, x into raw. Oh, I'm dumb. There we go. Okay. Convert into the array. Null terminate. Boom. And all these things should live long enough because raw args has to live while that's being borrowed and proc has to live and those have been leaked. It doesn't matter that we leak these things because they literally are going to be leaked anyways because going into exec... But in the parent process, I think it will drop them just fine. Right? Or is that a problem? Is it a problem in the parent? 
Because we fork? Is that a problem? No, because fork should be cow. We should be able to drop. Right? Am I dumb? Do I not know how fork works? Child and the parent run in separate memory spaces. Yes. They'll have the same contents. Yes. So this is totally fine. We make all of the things here. We don't leak them here. That means the debugger will correctly free all of the arrays, all of the C strings, everything will get dropped. The child will convert that into a raw pointer array and leak those, and it has to leak them, and then it execs. But the parent will correctly be able to drop all of it and clean up all that stuff, right? So we're doing them in the parent first just because it allows us to handle errors here instead of unwrapping in here. So I think this is now correct. And there we go. That should work, right? Right? This is like, we should have, we should now have this in the, the database. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there we go, there we go, yeah, yeah. And then the debugger exits, um, which is great. Fantastic. 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 Raise your poggers? Um, how does exec fail? Uh, negative one. One liner? Okay, and then this is going to be uh, failed uh, to execute child uh, program. Bam! Kind of ass. Seriously? Failed to execute child program, unreachable. Bam! Okay, and then if I call this like some random shit, we might not see this failure. Yeah, we don't. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So then we stop and then we exec and then we do this. Uh, make sure exec worked. If it's negative one, fail to execute child programmer. And then we print the error. And that's a panic. That's fatal. Unreachable. That's also fatal. And we check all of the errors here. Right? Ten zombies already. Okay. Works fucking great, right? Right? Um debugger dot uh event loop. Uh, wait for events. It's gonna work. It's gonna work, chat. Bam! Bam! Now... Now, what are we gonna do? 
is we're going to uh loop and we're going to um first block until any child has signaled wait id uh libc id type uh p all and then uh p all id is ignored Oh, we get a SIG info. Wait. What's the SIG info T then? Wait, we... Wait, I get the PID. What? Why wasn't I using this in my other implementation? We don't have to loop. Wait, we do have to loop. Yes. Um, and that, that can be null. Doesn't say nullable. Call me. Call me. Dum bop be deep bop be deep bop beep beetle bop beep bop beep boop dop doop be do do body do boop body do be do do doop body do beep boop bop boop boop uh okay we're gonna give it a libsy we'll give it all these Eggs did stopped continued as well as no wait. Uh, exited was stopped. What continued? Uh, and then, uh, that's the final arg. And then we give it this arg. Uh, and then, uh. Eh? Eh? Raise your poggers? Dedicated wham. Uh, and then sig info. And we're going to make this very perf. Uh, maybe on in it. Yeah, you like that? Maybe on in it. Bam. We're going maximum fucking perf. Uh, has mute pointer. Why doesn't it tell me what version this is? I guess it's always existed. Is is what it means. Cause I, yeah, I think that's the core thing. Like as pointers new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, fills in the following fields. Bam. Is that all of the field fields? Cause if that's not all the fields, then it's undefined behavior.
Signo, Erno, and Code? Signo, what? Oh, SI PID. Okay. Okay. Maybe I have it. I don't know. We'll see. Do, 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 do. Um, if. Negative one. And then we'll do standard IO error last OS error. Uh, make sure, uh, wait, ID was successful. Okay. Okay. Raise your poggers, everyone. Hey, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, and then, uh, wait ID on success. We know that that's always going to be set, right? The process ID of the child. Successful return, that is valid. Okay, so we can do that. So we can maybe init. Do I have a, a P, a, a, an SI PID on this? Sig info dot as pointer. Uh, deref that to get the SI PID. Does that exist? Method, not a field. Okay. Uh, get the PID that uh, caused wait ID to return. Uh, block until any child is signaled. Uh, we pass in w no wait, which causes uh, wait ID to behave like a peak. Thus, this will not consume the um, event yet. This just lets us block on all children and uh, use. Low CPU. No, no CPU. Okay. If wait idea wasn't successful, then that was an error. 
then we get the PID. And then this should give us the PID of what we just made. Beautiful. Then, exited, stopped, continued, wait. So that's literally every fucking flag. Exited, stopped, continued, W no wait. So we're waiting for any event from all children. We get the SIG info, we use maybe uninit so we don't end up zeroing out the stack. So we've done everything super efficient here. We only grab the PID as we need it. Um, DRFS pointer. And then SI PID, what does that actually take? Yep, that takes a ref self, so that is totally fine. No, no expensive stuff here. This is pretty cheap. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Then, little typo in the comment? Bullshit. Behave like a peak, thus this will not consume the event yet. Oh, oh monkas. Don't you want to get the SIG info out the maybe on it? No, because I don't, I, I don't know if all the fields are initialized, and they're probably not from the maybe on it. So this technically is more correct, right? We're only we're extracting only the field that we know is initialized. We're not assuming the entire thing to be initialized because we don't know if every single field has been initialized of the sig info. So this is technically more correct. That's my that's my intention here. Now, um we use a wait ID to um filter the amount of time we spend uh, polling for events. It is possible that await ID returned a PID that is under our management, and thus we can directly uh, consume the event from that PID and continue. However, if this PID is not under our management, we have to, I don't know. We can either just manually pull all of the other events, or we can rely on the other debugger loops consuming those events. I don't know. How do we want to implement this? So we could either have a fall through case where if we don't know what this pit is, we just wait non-blocking for all of our debuggies, our tracies, and if any of them have an event, then we handle the events. We could also just go back to waiting. Theoretically, that would allow a little bit more parallelism because it would allow another thread to like not be consuming its event. But I think that's gonna be rare in the design of this, so I think we're just gonna eat it. Um, so we'll say, uh, let me, um, states is equal to, uh, self dot tracies dot get mutes pid. If state is none, continue, um, not uh an event from our tracy so that's gonna hot loop us for a while because theoretically we could have an event deeper in the queue and the other debugger hasn't consumed this event and thus we don't know about it so we could like look ahead but i think it's just better to just go back to waiting um Oh, no. No, we have to pop out front. Yes. 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 We have to pop out front. We have to pop out front. Right? Cool. Then my other debugger made sense. Um. Yes. 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 Okay. 
Um, well, we're going to be doing that. So, um, if... Uh, thus, we can directly consume the event from that PID and continue. Perfect. Yes. So, get mutes. If let sum... If let's... I kind of don't want to do that here. Um, let's just do this. Uh, if state is none, it is possible that this PID is... PID is not under our management. So now we have to check if any of our debuggies, our fucking tracies, are, um have an event for us. We are no longer going to receive a signal from the wait ID, as that may infinitely give us the same PID. Um, however, the PID that it is reporting could be a child from a fork event from one of our debuggies and to get that fork event we have to look ahead in the signal queue to buy non blocking checking for signals from all of the children from all of our tracies uh this is designed for the very real case as such um uh stop event from new child um and this is like, I don't know, uh, signal stack is equal, uh, signal queue is equal to this, uh, stop event from new child, and then like, uh, trap events from, uh, Tracy telling us it forked the child. Right. There's no way around this. We have to look ahead. If we do not do this look ahead, the debugger will just infinitely loop on wait ID and never observe the PID that we... Uh, a, a PID under our control. Okay, it is also possible that we got a spurious wait ID um, indicating the PID of another uh, debugger instance uh, had an event. In this case, none of our debuggy uh, tracies will have a, a signal and will just go back to wait ID without doing anything. There's non zero overhead to this, but I don't think there is any other way to implement this without. A PID FD, which we are not using as it is too modern of a feature for the targets we want to support. There you go. There you go. Okay? So, if the state is none...
Okay. Um, and we only do this if it's none. If the very first thing in the signal queue is something from a PID that we recognize that's a Tracy, then we're not going to do this logic. Theoretically, there could be multiple signals in the queue and like this logic would pick them up, but that's going to be so rare that I think it's better to just have this fast path of wait on a PID. If we are already tracing that PID, then we just immediately get the signal from that PID and then we go back. I don't think we should like unconditionally always check all of our tracies for events. I think it's better to just pop one out at a time. It's, it's just going to be better in almost every case. Like theoretically, we could design an application where it would be faster to then check all of them. Basically, if all of them are always signaled. Um, but in most situations, it's, most are not going to be signaled. And thus, it would be a lot of waste to go to the kernel to ask about the status for all of them. Yeah, we can put a period there. I like run on sentences, okay? Why isn't it possible to collect an iterator on a slice? Did I answer that? Anyways, thank you so much for the six months. I think I did answer that. Get mute PID. Uh, and then PID here is going to be a PID. Woo! Beautiful. Raise your poggers? So we wait for anything to happen. If that was a failure, that was an error. Get the PID. If we recognize that PID, then we immediately will handle it. If we don't recognize that PID, then what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single uh, thing and we're going to look for the first event. Uh, and here we'll do... Uh, do we want to get the state right away? Um, yeah, I think so. Well, we're gonna want to... I'm not sure yet. Um, so now we're gonna do a wait, I, uh, wait PID. Because wait PID will give us a, a status. Um, which is actually what we want. So we're going to do a uh, uh, wait PID. Meebum! Thank you for the five month. Hell yeah. Meebum. Wait PID. And then we're going to give it the PID. Um, and we're going to do like, if let some events is equal to this. Um, and then we're just going to say, uh, next events. Uh, no, 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 no. No, for hid in uh self dot trace ease dot keys then we'll do that okay so this is uh go through all known traces uh check for an event break bam okay and then we're gonna wait pid on that yes Yes. Yes. I think this is good. Raise your hand if you think this is good. Um, safe wrapper around non 
blocking weight pid. Oh, we got a hype train that's getting close. Pid standard IO results. Uh, map error, error, wait, pid. Beautiful. Wait, pid returned an error. Get off the lawn. Thank you so much for the five gifted submarinos. Oh, there we go. Now we, now we got a real hype train going. Fuck yeah. Cheers for that. Uh, if let's. Yeah, some event. So this is going to be an option. And okay, none. Jaghan, thank you so much for the twist pan. Fuck yeah. Look at that. Oh, we just hit 69 subscribers. Nice. Congratulations, Jaghound, for being the 69th nice subscriber. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Nice. How did much to donate for a full stream in Emacs? Uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to pay to win that here. <laughs> uh, looking for events. Tonight. Exist, not continue. No way. Then we go into here and we wait for all these. Um, and then here we're gonna do if let mute state is let state is equal to dot. Uh, we'll do if let's. Some state is equal to this state else, and we'll do PID. PID state. Bam. Um. Else, this, bam, break, here, continue, next event. Fuck. The X. The X. I can't break out of this, can I? I can't, I can't. Do I have to use an option here? I can't do a control flow where like, if this happens, then return from the if, otherwise continue. There's no way to do that, is there? That's ass. That's ass, we have to use an option? Really? Really? That's gross. That?
Tracy's intermute find map. Um, mm, that won't work. No, can't do it. Equivalent to filter map. Oh, can I do that? Nope. No. No, that's shit, Desu. Shit solution. Why wouldn't it work? It won't work for the same reason that fucking... I, I can't... Wait, does it work? Does it work? Does it work? Hmm, I don't know if it works. I don't think it works. I'm... We're gonna see when this doesn't work, because it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, because that's just how this shit works. Because none of this... None of this fucking iterator closure shit fucking works in Rust. It's all ass. But we'll see. Nah, I gotta fucking work. It's gonna be shit. Uh, states. I can tell you right now is gonna be straight dog shit. It's gonna literally not work. Because, because you can't ever do this. Yup. Yay, you can't do it because the try operator breaks 95% of all Rust APIs. We can maybe use try find. I mean, technically this returns B, so I think we can do this. I think we can do this actually, because it should return B, so I think we can question mark the outside. Oh, well, it's an outer... Ah, uh, no, we can't. Yeah, nope. Um... We can do try find. Rust error control flow is really bad. It's unfortunate. There also needs to be a question mark operator for continues. Like, the, the amount of times that I write, like, foo equals option. If option is some, if option is none, continue. Option dot on wrap. Like, theoretically, you can do an if let. But now you're fucking adding so many scopes and you just end up fucking 20 indents in. Like, I really wish that there was uh, a question mark operator for continues. Or like a, a unwrap or continue. Hmm. Let chains don't solve it. Try blocks will come one day. They're already basically here. Donoran, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Create the operator. I'm just going to make my own language. I think that's what I've decided. 
I think we're just gonna make a new language because I'm I don't know I have too many issues with rust and too many issues that could be fixed not like not things that are like not possible they're just things that rust can't do because it's now locked down as a stable language just cringe um can we use uh try find uh break if that i know i can make that not if let's sum try find so this will go through and then you return f yields uh r and an r is a try output okay i i obviously i'll restructure this i'm just making sure it works first um Yeah, like here I can do return. Um, do I get return okay sum? And then everything else I do none? Or this would be okay none? This would be basically what I'd want. Well, in reality, it's this. Um, oh, does that want a bool? Ah, that wants a bool. Yep. <sighs> nice job, Desu. Nice fucking try, Desu. Nice. Fucking try. Bet you look like an idiot now. Desu needs to be stopped at all costs. That is fucking facts. Uh, semi here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yep, shadowed. Um... Result? Sure. I think Zig and Rust are the same. Are, are the languages in the best place currently? Do you have some issues with the Rust too? Yeah. You can't break a value out of a loop. Or out of a for loop, I don't think. Although I think they recently added something where you can kind of do that. Um, I know you can break a loop, obviously. Can you do it for fours? Only loops, I think. Yeah. What they should do is they should allow uh they should allow break value on for loops and then they should have it return um like none. Hmm. 
Break on blocks is the new thing. Ah, I see. Um, this is good, right? This does what I want it to do. Technically, I want the event in here too, but we haven't implemented that above yet, so let's just not do that yet. So break. Uh, check for an event. If we got an event, which we might not, it might be none, uh, then break, and then we got the results. The compiler will probably optimize this correctly. It just looks like shit expressiveness-wise. I just wish try was a little bit more first class. Bow. Booty bop boop beep boot doop bop. Okay. Let's see. Um, now we just have to implement weight pid. I think. All right, so we got to implement weight pid. Okay. Um, la la da da da, la da 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 da. Weight pid, pid dot zero. Status. Options. Uh, no hang, untraced, technically we don't need untraced, but we're just going to give it anyways. Yeah, we, we literally don't need it. Okay. Okay. Um, then, uh, so that's going to be a specific PID. And then what does it do? What does it return? Okay. And then what's our problem here? Ret return, 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 return value. Uh, PID, uh, negative one, uh, if no hang and one or more thing with pit exists, but have not changed state, then zero is returned. Okay. Um, no status. No status, else if ret is equal to negative one, then um error St standard io error last us error okay so if it is zero um if it is zero and pit exists and have not changed state then no status uh, which is non-error, and then otherwise we have an error. Okay. Uh, status. Oh, not stat. Yeah, red. Perfect. What are the existing... What are the issues with the existing debuggers? They literally do not work. They crash, they fail, they don't allow multiple processes in one instance. They have a lot of fucking overhead. They're slow. They, they, they fucking are incoherent and will literally fail with like certain thread situations. They just literally do not work. <laughs> like we literally just want to make a debugger that works. That, that is my goal here. <laughs> B 
They just do not work. Will you open source this? Probably. Let it all out. Okay. Uh, uh, check the status on PID. Uh, non blocking. Bam. No status. Bam. Okay. Then here. Now we're going to check the status. Okay. If with exited status. And this is going to return a uh, status. And this will be pub. Not pub crate for now. And this will be uh, status uh, codes from wait pid. Okay, and then um, uh, process exit with signal. Uh, terminated normally. Oops. Process terminated normally. And then this is the status. Exit status to the child. The least significant eight bits of the status arguments. Uh, this should probably be an I8. Um, eight bits of the uh, uh, arguments to exit. Right? Perfect. And then we have signaled. Uh, this is process uh, was uh, terminated by a signal. And then uh, this is the signal that uh, caused the process to terminate. I think we can... I don't know if that's going to be... Um, we'll see. Then this is going to be... Uh, uh, set if the child produced a core dump. Dumped. Cool. Stopped. Uh, child stopped by delivery of a signal. Only possible with one traced or if it's p-traced. And in this case, we're not using one trace, so it has to be p-traced. And then we should get the signal. Cause the uh, stop. And then continued. Uh, child... Uh, Resumed by uh, uh, execution. Bam. Stopped. So I think that's all of the top level information, but there's actually more information that we can glean in a minute. Can we use uh, Unicode and Rust source code? Of course. Why is the stream so good on the back end when we're working on projects? I have no idea. I wouldn't watch my own content. This is then going to be status is equal to that if with exited and then we'll do uh, this will be status exited uh, status libc wexit status status else if libc with signaled status else if libc stopped else if libc uh with uh continued else 
um unreachable unknown uh wait pid exit status uh status i think that i'm okay with panicking i don't need to make that a soft error because it's just it makes no sense to get to that point um convert uh status into rust status and we'll have signaled and then we'll have a signal it's gonna be uh w term sig and then we'll have dumped is uh libc w core dump status and then we'll see if our types are correct on these Status stopped signal libc w stop sig status. Bam. Um, okay. A little semicolon type beat and a little status type beat. Uh, okay, sum. Okay, unexpected token. Yep. Uh, and then we got how many colons? 50? Uh, yep, and then we'll just make these 32s. Bam! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's fucking go! And then here, we're gonna do a... Uh, P-Trace wait pid. Uh, uh, this I'm also okay having be a panic. This doesn't need to be a soft error. Basically, um, we expect we we check for soft errors on doing wait pid, but then we expect that if we got an event from wait ID, that we actually have a fucking event that we can pop off the stack for that pid. Which then means that down here, this can then have the events, and then that now handles that. So if we had an event, that's passed through. And then this is PID state and event. Nice! Let's go! I guess, yeah. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Look at that art right there, art. Okay, so we only get once. In this case, we already have it because we're iterating the set, so we're not like spuriously checking if it has the key. We're only actually looking the key up once. We return the PID, we return the states. We wait PID on the specific PID. We make sure that we had an event. 
Otherwise, we go down here. Let's print here. Uh, print LN. Hit edge case. Right? And that edge case, we're not going to hit yet. Um, but we can hit that edge case by uh, probably doing a fork. Maybe a couple forks. Shh, don't do this, chat. Okay, let's not do 10. Let's do like four. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously that's working because we want to... Uh, we haven't resumed them, so it actually never hits that point. And we're forking after exec. That makes no fucking sense. Okay, so stop. We check in. Here we go. Bam. So we check in, and now we want to resume the program. So we're going to match uh, states, and then we're going to say states wait for initial stop. Um, uh, then here we p trace and tell it to continue and shit. Uh, Tracy states. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, wait for initial stop. Um, then we'll say, this is the first time a new child has checked in. Let's, um, set the ptrace options. We want on it and let it continue. Okay, so the options we want. Do we even want a ptrace wrapper like we're doing here? Like, do we... Sure, fuck it. Sure. Um, okay, so that checks in. Since it's checked in, it hasn't done anything yet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set options on it. Yeah, I don't know if I actually want a P-Trace wrapper. Uh, I guess it's convenient for the error. Uh, P-Trace options from data, adders ignored. Data is interpreted as that. Perfect. So we're going to say, um, indicates, uh, sets. This is going to be sets, um, options on a given PID. Right? And then we'll have set options. And then we'll have a PID. And then we'll have options. Which is just probably an I32. Um... This is the uh, uh, options to sets. Beautiful. P trace set options. Unsafe. Libc. P trace libc. Set options and then a uh, kid. Options. Pid dot zero and then data is the second arg. Um, options. We might want to do an I size there. Maybe not. Oh, I think they actually use a very, very, very addic, very addic args or some shit. So set options, beautiful. Then we go through here. Okay, so we're going to do uh, p trace, uh, p trace set options, pid options. Let's just do zero for now. Let's do this. Uh, map error, error, p trace. Um, uh, failed to set options on a, uh, Tracy. Um, set, uh, P trace options on a Tracy. Clap. 
clean. Okay, and then if we just give this some bad shit, it should fail and be like, meh. Invalid arg. Perfect. 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 Okay. Um, options. Then we'll do... What kind of options do we want here? I think we want basically everything. Libc, p trace o trace clone. We definitely want that. Uh, that will automatically trace and handle clones. This will automatically trace and handle execs. Uh, P trace O. Wouldn't mind seeing exits. Now we get exits from terminations, but this will let us see exits before exiting occurs. So we'll actually get to like, basically we would, al this would allow us to introspect the target before it exits. Obviously trace fork. Um, Sis good, uh, we don't care about that. V fork, we'll trace V forks. Uh, V fork done? I don't really care about V fork done. So we'll trace clones, execs, exits, forks, and V forks. Don't care about set comp, don't care about V fork done, don't care about sis good. I think that is a good set of uh, options to be running. And that should build. Okay, here we go. So now we do that, and then we can continue it. Um, continue execution of a PID. And I think uh, this will take a um, status. Etrace cont. Um, and then if data is non-zero, it is the signal, um, to be delivered to the tracy. Otherwise, no signal is delivered. Okay. Uh, signal to deliver, um, to continue. I'm not going to make that an option, even though I could. Uh, zero means no uh no signal we could make it an option but there's kind of no fucking reason it would just be like super verbose in my opinion we trace cons and then this is uh signal is data yeah bam bam and now we can do a p trace, p trace, um, continue, head, signal zero. And this is resume execution of the, uh, Tracy, uh, discarding the, um, Initial stop signal. Right? So we don't want to actually pass through the stop signal, so we'll drop it by not passing it through. And then error continue. It failed to uh, continue. Um, here we go. This is a big one. And there we go, hit edge case. See, see what I was saying? See what I was saying? You see what I was saying, chat? Remember when you're like, oh, you're never gonna hit the edge case scenario. See how you just hit it fucking immediately? Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, let's just do one fork for now. Twitch is Twitch is dead. Oh, is that why my viewership has been dropping? I thought it was just because my work was stupid. I thought people just hated it. Um Perfect. Okay, so. Okay, let's get rid of that print. Obviously, we're hitting the edge case. No fucking surprise there. Okay, here we go. Look at that. We got a stop five. Um, yeah, it's not in wait for initial stop. Okay, um, this is uh, signal five. What's signal five? Does that continue? Uh, how do you how do you get fucking signals? Isn't there a way to get the list of signals? Man kill? No, no. Uh kill L, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, five is continue, I'm guessing. No, trap. Are we not getting the continue signal when it continues? Really? Really? I thought we were going to get the continue. I thought it was going to be like we continued. No? No? Really? I guess maybe if you p-trace. Oh, do I have to give it a cont? A sig cont? Oh, I was getting a 19. No, 19 is stop. Yeah. Um. Oh, do you just not get a continue? I guess you just don't get a continue. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess we just don't get continue statuses. Feels bad, because I really wanted that, but I guess we don't get them. I mean, maybe if we killed it. But I don't think that's correct. Adder is ignored. Yep. Number of the signal to be delivered to the Tracy. Otherwise, no signal is delivered. Killing is not good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, can we not do that? I guess we just won't see it continue, which feels bad, man. .co.uk.jpg.com. Hmm. I mean, there's nothing we can do, right? If we're not going to get those signals, then we're not going to get those signals. So...
Okay, that's fine, I guess. Stupid. All right, and then um, Tracy is running normally. And there we go. And then it's running. And then we get a stop event. And, uh, okay. All right. Raise your poggers, chat. Poggers up. Okay, now we have to make this slightly more advanced. So specifically on a SIG stop arena, or a SIG trap, so this will be a stop with a SIG trap. Um, and then we would have like details. Um, I think details is fine here. Um, for a SIG trap, uh -huh. This may contain details if uh, options like bang were used um, for the child. This will contain more detailed information about the uh I don't know. Do I want to do that here? Or do I want to do that in the debugger? Probably in the debugger. I think we'll do it in the debugger. It makes more sense there. Um. If. Uh, PID. If. Event. If the event is a status signaled stopped sorry signal libc sig trap uh check for detailed uh status information on specific uh trap events Hmm? Beautiful. When Twitch hits the Betsy, use IRC instead. Tragic. Okay. So, if it is a trap, then there might be further details. And that would be in the status. Um, raw status code from, um, wait, PID. Okay. Um, okay, then we'll do an if let this status ban is equal to, uh, event. Yeah? There's an op, uh, uh, if the tracer doesn't restart the tracy before entering the next wait pid, Sig count will not be reported to the tracer. Use a ptrace listen. 
Restart the stop Tracy, but prevent it from executing. The resulting state of the Tracy is similar to a process which has been stopped by a SIG stop. It only works on seized process, and we're not seized, so no. Nice try. A for effort, B for execution. <laughs> um, okay, so if we add a stop due to a trap, then if... Let's just print this for now. Beautiful. I think it's all shifted up. Um, status shift eight is sig trap, which I think itself is shifted by eight. Or 10, or some shit. TLDR, I think we shift by 16. I think. God damn it. There we go. If uh if status shift sixteen is equal to lib C P trace event clone. I hope we're doing this right. I'm pretty sure we are. Fork. A little V fork in there. V fork done, set comp. Don't care about any of those. Exit, fork. Yeah, what do we subscribe to? Clone, exec, exit, fork, and v4. Yep. Okay, so now this should tell us what happened. Yay, we got a fork. What are the odds? We forked. No surprise. Blue or black wants a plushie. Blue or black, you get to be a cannoli. You get to be cannoli. Mmm. Mamma mia, pasta. Big spaghetti. We got the meatball. Okay. One, one, one. Ba, 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 ba. We got the status. Bam. Okay, so then we have to do some stuff here. Um, uh, we can get the PID on clone exec. If the executing thread is not a thread group leader, the thread ID is reset to the thread group leader's ID before this stop. Former thread ID. Okay, don't give a shit. 
I think I just care about on clones. Clone, fork, and V fork. I want to do get event message. Retrieve a message. Exit, it's the exit says for fork, v-fork, and v-fork done, and clone, it's the pit of the new process for that is some dumb shit. Okay. How do I do this? Uh, gets the event message, uh, from the most recent P-Trace events. Uh... Uh, PID to query event info from PID PID. And then, I guess, this is gross, but fine, but gross, but fine, okay? Um, we're gonna do, uh, uh, message. That's a mutable, an A ref mute, U size. Um, adder is ignored. Adder is, yep, so it's data again. Now we have to add some refy boppers. Mm -hmm. Adding some lifetimes, I got a lifetime. Been in battle, That's the lifetime song about rust. Uh, what is it? Get message, get event message, get event message. Yeah. Pid, and then here we will give it. The address of the message. Okay, um... What do we want to do here? Let trap reason is equal to this. Oh, oh, just barely fit. Uh, clone? Um, let PID is equal to z zero. And then we'll do P trace. Um, new PID, new PID. P trace, the old PID. Like that? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting there, chat. <laughs> Didn't know I was watching Home Improvement. Ah. 
uh, new process. Huh? Huh? Um, query the PID of the newly forked process. Like, new PID, get new PID or some jump? Get new PID, sure. Dumb fucking name. Okay, then we have uh, trap reasons. Uh, states of uh, Tracy. Uh, different... Detailed reasons why we got a sig trap from a Tracy. Okay, and uh, enum trap reason. Uh, process. <laughs> process? Fork. Okay, process cloned. Yeah, let's let's go through them. Let's go through them. Uh, cloned, uh, invoked, clone, and uh, gave us the new pid. Mhm. Mm yeah, we'll do this. Clone pid. Process invoked. Exec. VE, technically. Process invoked. Exit. Process invoked. Clone. This, the next one's going to be a fork and V fork. Exit, fork, and v-fork. How do we stylize v-fork? V, v, cap, v, cap, f? That's a really hard problem. Clone, exec, exit, fork, and v-fork. Okay. Can I do that? Bonkas? Uh, fork. Fork. Let's fucking go! Hey, look at that! We got a stoppage event due to a forkage event. Can't I, like, or these inside or some shit? No. Um... Ah, uh, V-Fork. Okay, uh, the uh, uh, debuggy 
the Tracy spawned a new head, um, which has automatically been attached to register it in our database. Uh, Tracy's dot inserts new ped. Um, Tracy states. Uh, this wait for initial stop because I think they will stop, stop, start, stop, start, start, stop, stopping. Uh, start with a sig stop. Yep, perfect. Uh, we spawned a new program and we're waiting for the debugger to check in. Also used when a uh, trace E forked and we um, are waiting for the initial, uh, for the new PID to check in, which will automatically be stopped. Bam! Bam! Bam, bam, bam. Uh, we don't really care about exits or execs, just these. In these cases, we're just updating the coherency of our database. So check for common trap reasons, and then here we go, ready? Bink, and now we see the new PID. Look at that. Wait for initial stop. We then got a stop event that indicated that a, a fork happened in the first PID. And we then register 26799 in our database as something that we are expecting to show up soon with an initial stop. And then it stops in with an initial stop. And that matches the state we expect. We actually need to check that it is a stop. Um, here, what we're going to do is we're going to assert that um, of uh, matches event, and this will be uh, what is this? What do we call this? A status stopped signal 19 uh, libc. Big stop. And then don't care about the other shit. Okay. Uh, whoa. Um, expected initial stop. Got different code. Okay. And then, uh, that's technically here. Um, make sure we got the stop that we expected. Right, so at the initial stop state, we expect that. That then gives us a time to add all our ptrace options, our like follow fork mode effectively, to that new PID. We then continue it. We drop the old stop signal. We then mark that that tracy is running. Um, but now we're actually asserting that it stopped the way we expected. And, and this will work as expected. Yeah. So, and those all come in order. We got the stop. It's then transitioned. We then see the exec. I guess we're execing while we fork, so we should see two execs, theoretically. I have no idea how that works, actually. Why don't we see two execs? I guess exec eats the, the process group. Right? So I guess, wait, yeah, why don't we see two execs? Nevertheless, let's see if we're hitting our edge case. And this is our edge case. If we see edge case now, that means that, and we won't see it all the time with one fork. We might never see it, but the edge case basically would print if we were to get notification basically we were to get the initial stop from the thread right 
the edge case happens if we don't know the PID that's, that had an event. And in this case, that would happen if we were to see the new, newly spawned thread check in prior to the, um, prior to being notified of the fork itself. And there you go. There you can see the edge case. So like just adding a couple more forks, you can see sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. This is a place where a lot of debuggers will give like kind of weird behavior because things are checking in out of order. We force that these will always be in order. So it doesn't matter if there's edge cases and stuff. And then let's just libc exit here. There we go. Right? So we will always see them in the correct order. Um, and are we seeing all of them? Is this right? This is not right. This is not right? Oh, um, oh, and that's why you're only seeing one exec. There's a race condition. Uh, because it was like getting to the exec or the exit prior. So now we should see a, uh, there's the exit at the end. Is that the right amount of forks? I feel like it's not. Head, wait for initial stop. Damn. That's not, that's not right. It's not right. What? 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 Hello? What? How? What? What? Okay, what am I doing wrong? Is it because of the loop? Is it the loop? Because this we should have one fork, one child. Yep, one fork, one child. This should, we should have more than that. Two forks. No, we should have three forks. Fork, and then fork, fork. Okay, what did I do wrong? Chat, where's the bug? Oh, I never, I never fucking continue these, do I? Ah, oh, Jesus, that's fucking... Um... Resume execution, uh, discard the, um... Resume execution, discard the, uh, ba 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 Uh, discard the trap. I literally wasn't resuming execution. I'm, I'm so dumb, chat. So dumb. Clone fork or view fork? Yep, that's a catch-all. We'll just, boop! Register the new Tracy, and then continue execution. And discard the trap. Bam. Uh, then here we'll say panic. Oh, yeah, and then here we'll do, I guess, continue next event. Which is technically implied here. Yeah, that's implied here. Well, not with the match trap reason. I guess I could match on the event. Um, event trap. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Eh. We'll just uh. Yeah. We'll uh. Um. Okay. We'll match on the event, and then if it's an event, or I guess these are stat statuses. Um. Status. Exited. Um, process, uh, terminated normally, signaled, this is process terminated uh, by a signal, status, uh, stopped, and then here we can just do signal. Um, and then status continued, uh, which just won't happen. Okay, bam. So we get the events. Uh, we're starting to get a little more nested than I prefer. Yeah, again, a little bit more nested than I like to be. Um, and we'll keep this separate for now. Um, and then, uh, just, uh, um, then we're going to remove the process. All right. Delete them. Because those are now gone permanently. They will never, will never have another event. They're just dead. Um, those are fully terminated. And then here, if it's stopped by a signal... Um, we'll say, uh, like, I don't know, handle signal or some shit. Let's just bang it in there for now, and then we'll figure out, out how we want to, like, handle indentation and shit. Um. Okay, resume execution, discard the trap. Um. And then continue next event. Um, match trap reason. Uh, trap reason can be none. Yep. So everything else will go through here. So we don't need the continue next event. Okay. Um, this is just uh, pass through the signal. Um, unknown signal. Pass it through. Right. And then here we just pass in the signal. Right? So basically, the only things that we discard is when we're expecting an initial stop, we assert that we got an initial stop, and then we drop that initial stop signal because we want it to continue, and then we set it to running. If it's in the running state, then if it exited, we remove it from the database. If it, is, if it died to a signal, remove it from the database. Otherwise, if it continued, shouldn't happen. Ah, uh, that panics. And if it stopped, um, um, if it stopped, then if we know why it stopped and the reason that it stopped is explicitly one of the events that we told the kernel to notify us about and stop the process, then um, we do we stop that. Um, we also need to handle all the other trap reasons. So we want the none case here. Perfect. 
Perfect. Exited. Not a not a tuple variant. Perfect. Yep, and this knows we don't handle these. Um some trap reason uh exec or trap reason exits um resume execution discard the trap and then everything else will go through here in fact i want to say none i want to go up here i want to then change this and this and this none and this and some something like this um uh uh other uh different detailed reasons why we got a trap from a tracy when it was i, I don't know how, how do we describe this um from a tracy when it was expected due to a um uh 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 I don't know, a fucking uh, event. What do they call it? Uh, I don't know, a, a, a status, an option, an option we specified? Uh, when it was ex explicitly requested via a P-Trace option? Sure, something like that. Kind of cope, kind of cringe. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, so um, we will now discard the signal if it was the initial stop, in which case we were expecting it. We will discard the signal if we explicitly requested for that signal, in which case we shouldn't stop the fucking debugger. That would be very weird to issue a stop command to the fucking uh, program because we request it, and then everything else is a pass-through. So now we should see, that looks good. That looks good. Raise your poggers. How many forks do we do? Two? Two forks. Two forks means uh, two threads. Is that four? We should have four threads. We should have three forks, four threads, four initial stops. Four exit stops, four exits. And that makes sense. Everything checks out. We have the initial stop. We see that that forked. We then see that fork checking in. We then see that we forked again. We see that fork checking in. We see we forked again. We see that fork checking in. We then see all of them literally call exit, the exit syscall. Um, and then we see them actually exit due to exiting and then yeah wait id no child processes we can fix that right now we can do next event is while self.traces is empty while uh loop while we have something to debug and then at the very end return okay and now this will spawn this thing run the debugger event loop and then it will literally return when everything is exited. Let's go! Clean! 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 And there you go. There is, I think, a pretty well-managed state machine. <laughs> uh, technically, they're already managed. Well, not managed unless they're known ahead of time. Um, yeah. Okay, sure.
fucking clean. Yeah. That's so fucking good. Beautiful. And our CPU usage should be fucking zero. Let's put in a let's put in a bigger sleep, but it should just be zero because we're just gonna be blocked on weight ID, right? Um, we're gonna be blocked on weight ID. Then if anything happens, then we can go in there, and we should be able to make a make two of these bad boys in the same fucking process, right? Um. God, why do I always forget what this is called? Oh, fuck. Scope. Why do I always forget that? Here we go. Here we go. This is big. This is big. Unwrap. Unwrap. This is big. Uh, S. Fuck off, you piece of shit. Wait, what? Spawn? What? That's just not how computers work. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. Let's go! Let's go! And those are two different debugger instances. Two separate debugger instances Handling their shit separately. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. And let's uh let's stress let's stress it a bit. Let's stress it a bit. Uh chat, if the stream goes down, it's probably because I kernel panicked. Okay. I don't know. What's uh what's that? Can we do eight forks? Is eight forks? How many is that? I don't know. It might be a lot. No problem. No problem. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Easy, dude. Look at that. Never doubted. Fucking clean, dude. Fucking clean, man. Just, ugh, just luxurious code quality. Okay, and now we do our fork, push the thing. This should now run programs. My fucking echo. Where's my echo print? What? How does that not work? Seven forks? That's only 128? Is it? I think that's true. I don't know if it's only 128. Is it? I don't know if it's 128. I don't know why I can't do that math in my head. Why am I not seeing prints? Are the prints just getting eaten? Are the prints just getting eaten by this print? Is that print covering up the prints? Okay, not a great look. Okay.
Oh, that's not gonna be happy. <laughs> um, um, uh, exec. We continue on an exec. Just go with go, go continue. No state changes on those. So let's remove them. That adds a new one. This continues. This continues. This passes it through, which all of that's correct because these are signals that we generate, and thus we don't want to deliver those. These are signals we don't generate, so we want to deliver those. Uh, those aren't signals, so there's no continuing. Um, this is, that's a signal that we manually trigger, so we eat that. So I think all of the state machine is correct right now. Um, this looks like shit. I think it's because there aren't enough comments or white space, but whatever. Um, why am I not seeing fucking print, man? Oh, I'm doing args wrong because I'm fucking dumb. Jesus Christ, I'm so fucking stupid. God damn it. Chat, why didn't you point this out? <sighs> we can into iter this. Um... Fucking dumbass. Um, Woo! let's go. We'll have hello world and a hello burled. <laughs> Two separate debugger instant Soros. Fuck yeah. Clean. 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 It's not even a release build. We can do a release build and we'll get even more perf. Look at that perf. So fast. So fast. Uh, okay. You can get rid of that. There we go. Bam. Hello. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's. So obviously it's going to work. You're going to get completely separate events for separate debuggers. Even though they're running in the same process, they're actually separate fucking events, which is. Chef's kiss. Um. Breakpoint support tomorrow? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But first, we have to write, uh, Splooger. Okay? Tell me this API ain't clean right now. Uh... I uh, can't infer the type. Yeah, see, this is this is where things become a problem because it's like, you know what type this is. Dude, that's fine. We'll just give it an empty, but it's dumb. Okay. Hey, look at that field execute chunk program. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Build execute child program. And then that means that what? We insert that. I don't know how this works. Because shouldn't we register that PID and go into the event loop? 
Right? Like, shouldn't we be going into the event loop here? This is an edge case that I expected would just fail catastrophically. Okay, we hit the event loop. Oh, I got rid of the fucking print. Like a chungoid. Yeah. So it's correctly han handling the fact that it's panicking. We get the initial stop. We then panic when we exec. And then we get a stop. Uh, we got a stop signal five. I don't know. Oh, that's just an exit. Um, and then it exited. Okay, sweet. So it panicked underneath us. Totally fine. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, that just worked. Of course it just worked. Everything just works when you write code this fucking good. Okay, so now we need to make splooger. And splooger is just going to call fork a couple times. And then like, uh, I don't know, sleep one. How many forks is that? Nine? Ten? Fuck yeah. Um. Okay, and then uh, and then what do I want to do? Let's get rid of the print. Okay. So um, beautiful. Wall must use return value from fork. Who fucking cares, dude? Fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, how do I have this, like, block until it exits? Oh, I don't think I have to? Well, exiting will exit all of the children, right? Because this will... This should still work, which is good. But this will just exit early, right? Potentially. Like, it, it, not all of the forks will happen because it will exit at some random point. So we should get, like, a random number of threads. Obviously, our tool is totally fine here. Uh, oh, I didn't rebuild it. There you go. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking pogs. Oh, big pogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely getting some threads. We're getting some threads, and they're kind of in a race to exit, but we're getting, we're getting some threads. Fuck yeah, look at that time. Look at that time, dude. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right, let's try this. Uh, FF splooger. Nice, nice. What about GDB? H how's GDB gonna do? Um, well, that's only gonna do, that's not gonna follow forks, is it? Oh, well, you... Wait, how does that work again? It, I, I don't know how, like, follow fork mode and shit works. It, it's dumb. Whatever. GDB sucks ass. Um, okay. Good tool. Good tool. Good tool. Works fucking great. All right, chat. Um, I think I like this. I think I'm going to leave it off here. We'll continue this off, I don't know, some other day. Probably tomorrow. Maybe some other day. Not sure. Um, this is kind of the easy part. The hard part now is we need to... Uh, I want to add support for migration so that we can migrate a, de uh, a Tracy from one debugger to another. We're basically, like, assuming you mu mutably own two debuggers that you could, like, hand off ownership of a Tracy, which would be, like, a detach-attach. I don't know if you can do that atomically, but, like, theoretically, I could see myself wanting to do that if I want to, like, split up some of the work for a single program into multiple threads, and I want to, like, move ownership in 
kind of focus more specifically on certain uh certain things um also breakpoints start to get really hard so breakpoints what we want to do um is before we do breakpoints we'll probably put a sig 7 and when we get the seg fault what we want to do is we want to suspend all the threads because when you get a seg fault or like when you get some breakpoints and some signals it doesn't stop all of the threads like some of the other threads keep running so what we need to do is we need to make a coherent model where we can stop all of the other things that are traced as part of the debuggy before we then handle the events and then we have to resume all of them and then re-deliver the the sig sev so that it actually like passes it through and that requires a state machine uh right now we just have this wait for initial stop in this running state and that's when we'll add another state which is like temporarily stopped or like paused and then we'll have a like waiting to deliver signal um because basically we'll get a signal we'll then have to hold that signal and put it in some state as like we have to deliver this at some point we then have to issue stops to all the other things we have to wait until we get those stops because theoretically they could have just like forked and we then have to stop the newly forked thing so you have to wait for every single thing to check in with the stop then you have to say that those are stopping because of this initial reason is why they stopped. So you have to like keep that state. Then once all of them have stopped, then you can like issue the breakpoint. And then you resume all those, resume this with the original signal and let it consume. So there's like, there's non-zero state to do that correctly. Um, so yeah. I think that's that's when it starts to get more difficult, but I think the design here, honestly, it's pretty salt. Let's put it up on GitHub quick. Um, uh, oh, let's fix these fucking warnings. Fill the spawn process. Yep. And... What other dumbass shit do we have in here? Exited. Uh, never use status. Never use signal. And never use dumped. Mm. Um, I'm actually okay making those pub. Uh, specifically. Uh, not that. Status. I think it's reasonable that I might give status to an end user. Um, so now that is gone. So there's no warnings, no errors, and then let's just go back to uh. I don't know, uh, bin, echo, hello world. Okay. Now run this. Um, splooger, cargo clean, get status, get add, source, car, uh, cargo toml, uh, cargo star, get ignore, get commit. Am initial, just handles things. Uh, the, uh, the tracies. Okay, and then I'll make this. Put it up on lemonade. Uh, lemonade. Mm -hmm. uh, a a debugger for Linux. Uh, in Rust. Okay, we'll add documentation at some other point, and then we'll just do a uh, this. And there you go. You can find it here. All right, thanks for stopping by. I hope everyone had fun. Uh, we'll do some more shit at some other point at some other point. So uh, cheers, see you around.